just outside of Fort Worth sits the Texas Motor Speedway, where the best drivers in the world race in wide open spaces. Under the lights, in prime time, who will take aim at the reigning champ? Find out right now on Fox. Racing day, so loud out here, I can't hear a thing. Man, the fans are going wild. And these drivers came to rock, and no place else but Fox knows how to do it in that star style. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. Hey, now, here we go, race day. Don't you be going slow. Keep that pedal down on the floor. Push it to the crowd, can't take no more. Then, hey, says the flag came down, be hey. NASCAR on Fox welcomes you to prime time racing here at the Texas Motor Speedway. You can fit four Cowboy Stadiums in the infield here alone. And as the sun goes down, the speeds are going to go up. It's warm and windy so far at the Great American Speedway. Jimmy Johnson, the five-time champ, looking for his first win of this year. There's the Daytona champ who dominated this race last year. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. returning to the scene of his very first win. Those are just some of the headline acts that you'll see go 200 miles per hour around this mile-and-a-half track. Our Hollywood Hotel in the middle of it all, and the guys are here. Hall of Famer Darrell Waltrip, the three-time champ and two-time Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip. I'm Chris Myers. We're glad you're with us on Fox, where America gathers every weekend. And it's been a season of surprise is somewhat as some of the brightest stars have yet to win. We're going to see which driver steps up today. But first, after a little bit of a spring break here, uh, what you guys do during the off week? Man, I had a great off week. I went down to New Orleans and watched the Kentucky Wildcats win the national championship. Four. I was there. And then I headed over to Augusta really? to cheer Bubba Watson on, who won the Masters. And I was there. You were there? I didn't see you. I was sitting at home on the couch, so I was there, baby. <laughs> well, tonight you have the best seat in the house, and the wind already picking up, up to 30 mile per hour gust. How will that affect the drivers? Let me tell you something. I'll tell you, the motor coach is down there. The motor coach weighs 50,000 pounds, okay? The race car weighs 3,500, and that motor coach is rocking around like a bucking bull down there. So, uh, I tell you, this wind is a big factor tonight. It's going to really play havoc with the cars. It's tough enough to get down into turn three at 200 miles an hour as it is, Chris. You had 35 miles an hour of gusting wind. It's just that much harder. It's a tailwind. <laughs> it depends where the wind hits you. Martin Truex Jr. on the pole. Let's look at some of the storylines here. And Greg Biffle has been Mr. Consistency all season long. No wins, but he does lead in points. Dale Earnhardt Jr. with three top fives. This might be the night that he breaks his slump. Tony Stewart owning the first part of 2012 already with two wins, but because of a crash in practice, he's in a backup car. Now, Greg Biffle won this race in a backup car in 2005. Uh, what effect does that have on a guy like Smoke? If Tony's going to have trouble, this would be a good place to do it. He won the last race here last year. He's won three of the last uh, the last three mile and a half of races that we've been to, tracks we've been to. So this is a good place for him to have trouble. He doesn't have starting the back, so he's in good shape. The, the car that he's brought here and crashed was the one he wanted to race. Now he's racing one that he doesn't. So we'll <laughs> see if that has a factor yeah, or not. And, he, and he's starting back of the pack. So we've had five different winners over the first six races. These are the guys that have had success a with Jimmy Stewart, but there are, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, with Tony Stewart, but there are some guys like Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards who have yet to win, and Jeff Gordon has led the most laps, but yet he's finished eighth is his best, and he's 21st in the point standings, and after all that, he's starting 34th. That's his worst position so far this year to start a race qualifying. Reason for concern. Just think how his season started. It started with him flipping upside down the first time he'd ever done that. And quite honestly, his whole season's been upside down. He just can't get a break. He's got one top 10 finish. He's got work to do. 
He's got a great team, but he's got work to do. But he's fast, man. He's leading laps. It'll all come together. Yeah. I think Jeff does well tonight. Okay, don't blame age. He's 40, so is Tony Stewart. Not all engines have been revved up, though. Kyle Busch struggling after a strong 2011. His average finish so far is a mediocre 19th. And Casey Kane has found a little luck with the Hendrick team. He has two poles, but has struggled on the track. He has not led a single lap all season long. But I want to go back to Kyle Busch, because last year when they ran here late in the year, he was parked, suspended for some incident. Obviously, he hasn't won since, and, and we expect this guy who was in the chase last year to be a factor. I, I, don't, I don't think he's racing enough. And, and, and last year, people said maybe he's racing too, too much. much. But I think he feels like his hands are tied. He's got a team, a nationwide team. He's not able to get in there and participate. He can't drive the car. He's got to let his brother drive it. He's got a truck team. Can't go there. I think he feels a lot of restriction. Plus, his cars are not right. Yeah, They're not hear, driving right. We constantly hear him say, I don't like the way it's driving. I don't like the, like the way the car feels in the turns. I can't get it through the corners. What do you do if your car won't handle? You changed something. <laughs> well, his crew chief, you may be pointing to. I'm just saying. You're just, I'm saying. just saying. All right, you we have a, something. We have a lot. Third is his uh, best finish, by the way, for Kyle Busch in 13 races here in Texas. Here's what's around the turn. We'll take a look and we'll listen to that wild finish in Martinsville. Is there any carryover? Carl Edwards, a thrill seeker, and recently spent some time with a Fort Worth SWAT team. Plus, we'll have a little fun talking with Jimmy Johnson and Dale Earnhardt Jr. here. NASCAR on Fox. We promise a fun ride in Texas. NASCAR on Fox season has been anything but predictable. There have been close calls, conflict, and controversy. Record in one, the record in one. The superstars have not disappointed, but others still search for the elusive checkered flag. It all counts from this point on. Stay tuned to see what happens next. Jeff Gordon saying the wind will be a factor. He's the only driver this year to lead a lap in each of the first six races, but still searching for that elusive win so far this year. When we were last on the track racing, it was in Martinsville, Virginia, kind of a quiet, bucolic type of town. And after the race, Martinsville must have felt like a radio shock jock capital of the world. Drivers chatting up a wild and crazy finish. Sometimes good radio makes for great TV. Rudiman has two flats. He may not make it to the pits. Quit running. You shut off. What in the hell is that pin doing? I have second, no idea second, why second. David Rudiman did not go to the pits a while ago. I would not have stopped on the freaking racetrack. I would have limped it around there and come to pit road, which is exactly what I was trying to do. And for some reason, I don't bring it back. Good job today. You'll be fine, old man. Oh, I'm freaking going for it here. Get a hold up. Let's go. Green flag. Look at Ryan Newman. He gave Boyer shot getting there. Uh, They don't. They spin the tires. The 39 hits you in the rear. I mean, if I didn't go down there, the 39 was, and we just all run out of real estate. And hitting the 15 just gave him the courage to get up there and go three wide. He just bombed it in there like a moron. That's just short track racing. Feel free to wreck the 15. He checked up. I mean, you could point a finger at all three of those guys in the front row. And Ryan Newman wins. Too bad. We are Hendrick 1-2-3. 200 win and everything. Damn it. Say what you want. We stood in victory lane. What a fun mess. All right, a lot of finger pointing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Any carryover tonight? You weasel? You weasel? <laughs> <laughs> They're all mad at Feel each free other. to wreck the yeah. 50. And I so like three of them on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be crazy. These guys don't forget, I can promise you. And that was a day that Rick Hendrick will never forget. He's so close to having that 200th win. And, and that was one of Jeff Gordon's best racetrack. If he's going to get a win, that would have been a good place to do it. But listen to these finishes, oh, 40th, 8th, 12th, 35th, 36th, and 14th. Jeff Gordon is in uncharacteristic territory for the start to a season. And so is Hendrick Motorsports. No wins in the last 12 races. Uh, NASCAR's most popular driver, 37-year-old Dale Earnhardt Jr., for the last 135 races has been asked the same question, when are you going to win? Uh, the good news is, tonight might be the night. His first ever win came here in Texas. A junior has been steady and consistent so far this season. Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 88 Dale Jr. 
is on the move, guys. And there goes Junior. How will he finish? How will he close out the race? Dale Junior, he, he's got that swagger back. The Junior Nation should be very excited. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got his first win here. His next win would be his 19th. And, you know, Dale, you kind of jokingly said, hey, I'm not Nostradamus. I can't predict the future. But what you can talk about is just how well you guys have performed and raced early in this season, second in points. Yeah, we're, we're having a good year, and we just want to uh, keep that going tonight. Um, that Mountain Dew Chevy's been uh, pretty good in practice. We've been working on some things, but... Uh, you know, it's real windy, and that's probably going to change how things are tonight a little bit, make it a little more challenging. But it'll be it'll be a fun challenge. Uh, the racetrack's been in great shape all weekend. They do a good job here in Texas, and uh, should be a good race. Dale, the American flag's blowing straight out. What does it feel like in the race car? Uh, it just uh, changes the way the balance is on both ends of the track a little bit different. You know, on entry, when you got a headwind on entry, uh, the car's got a lot of downforce on the nose. It's a little bit loose in. Vice versa, going into the corner to tailwind, it can get a little tight uh, driving the car off into the corner. So you just kind of got to realize that's happening and uh, be sure to give your crew chief uh, the right amount of information uh, and not work on things you can't fix. You know, you can't really fix uh, what the air's doing to the car. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Junior. Ed, Steve, happy birthday, by the way. Steve Burns' uh, birthday today. And Dale uh, says, I'm not Nostradamus when people ask the question, but I'll ask you, when's he going to win a race? You have been asking me that for almost four years now. <laughs> Maybe tonight. I just love his body language, and I love his talk. I mean, he is very confident, very positive. You can see a little smile on his face there, even though he's concerned about his car, as everyone is, but he's confident. Yeah, just six points out of leading the points, and Junior hasn't led the points since uh, 2004. If he finally gets to victory lane, Miss Sprint Cup will be there to greet him, and it's one of the perks of her job, along with encouraging fans to play the role of announcer. to introduce their favorite drivers during the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race by submitting videos on Sprint.com slash speed. We wanted to see if these Texans have what it takes to deliver the best driver introduction for Ryan Newman. All right, Justin, are you ready? I believe I am. I believe I am. All right, let's see it. We're introducing the driver number 39. No, 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 no. You got you to have enthusiasm. I want excitement. All right, here we go. Introducing the driver of the number 39 car from South Bend, Indiana, the man himself. That's better. That's better. Okay, you guys saw what Ryan Newman is looking for in his fan video, so go get started on a video for your favorite driver. For official rules and to submit your videos, visit sprint.com slash speed. Then look for the winning videos during the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race. Good luck. Sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you, Miss Sprint Cup. We'll talk live with Jimmy Johnson and who caddied at the Masters. Stay tuned. Live in Texas, and there's the guy who's been dominating the first half. His race team, Stuart Haas Racing, has won three of the first six. He, of course, the defending champ and the driver known as five-time, working on a sixth championship. Jimmy Johnson, by his high standards, off to a slow start. But remember, uh, Jimmy's already been named an Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press, also been named the most influential athlete by Forbes magazine. Tonight, Jimmy just wants to be the winning athlete. Oh, Champion Jimmy oh, Johnson. No. Had a tough day for Jimmy Johnson. He's starting off in a hole. This guy here's not done yet. Jimmy Johnson does not give up. But you can't write the final chapter without including Jimmy Johnson. And here comes Jimmy Johnson from worst to first. And we have the driver of the 48 Lowe's Cobalt Tools Chevrolet uh, with us. And Jimmy, thanks for being with us. I, I know you're focusing on tonight, but what did not, not winning a championship for a year teach you about this year? Well, I mean, it's just such a special thing that takes place in a driver's career. And, and I was very fortunate to do it five times. And I, I'd love to get back to that position again and, and win another and really start another streak and, and click off a few more, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, it's great to have that motivation, though, to not win the championship and be focused on uh, building a building our race team back up and getting it in contention once again. And I feel that we have all those ingredients this year. I know some of our results don't show that, um, you know, this year. But we've led some laps. We've been up front. We've been a factor in a lot of races. And I think victory lane's right around the the corner for us. Hey champ, it's uh, DW. I, I got a question. I'm curious. Did you and did you and Gordon did y'all talk about the restart at Martinsville? Did you think about maybe orchestrating that a little bit better than it turned out? 
Well, I think that we were both so focused on on trying to win the race. Um, I was thinking that you know Tony made it around the outside of me there in the fall, and I was hoping I could do that to Jeff. And I, I know that he was focused on winning the race on his side. We didn't have a clue those guys pitted behind us. And to be honest with you, I don't think our crew chiefs wanted to tell us that they pitted. <laughs> so when when we were getting shoved down the straightaway and into turn one, we had no clue that they were on new tires, and, and that's that's why they were all over us like that. And it didn't take long before we uh, were turned around and had our problems. Jimmy, it's Michael. That was a mess at Martinsville. You go flying down into turn three with a 35-mile-an-hour tailwind, that could be a mess here in <laughs> Texas. How does that affect you as you drive down to that turn? Yeah, it's going to be a wild uh, a wild night with the wind. And as you know, Michael, um, if it's a steady wind, you can kind of get into a rhythm and, and even tune the car some to it. But what gets you is when a gust of wind comes along. And it never fails that you're in a great rhythm. All of a sudden, a gust <coughs> catches you, sends you off into the corner far faster than you want to go uh, with le less downforce. And it's an exciting ride up to the fence. <laughs> All right, well, Jimmy, good luck. And, and by the way, nice job, too, visiting uh, the local school here, Clara Love yeah. Elementary, encouraging children to read, spend more time, the Speeding to Read program. Yeah, it was a great time over there. And thank you, guys. I look forward to getting this Cobalt Tool Chevrolet in Victory Lane. All right, man, good luck. Thanks, guys. You see Rick Hendrick, too, in the background. Yep. Uh, when he yeah, was talking about wanting to win that 200th Baby for his, Genevieve. His, uh, his car owner. All right, let's talk about this track and an average maybe of eight or nine restarts here in Texas. An exciting moment at any point in, in a race, but why specifically here? Well, it's it restarts just a big deal in, in in general if you look at let's just look at bristol this is a restart between keselowski and and uh, kenseth there kenseth actually beat keselowski to the line that's a no-no but nascar deemed it it was a legal move and it was okay and they let it go keselowski wins the race no harm no foul but right here guys in the front there 24 48 they're on old tires they're setting ducks these cats behind them, they got new tires. All those cars highlighted, they got new tires. When they drop the green flag, here goes Boyer to the inside, and it's a melee. That's what you're going to get on restarts. Those are short tracks. Wait till tonight. You come off the of turn four here, you got a little dirt on your tires, you spin those tires a little bit, and everybody bottles up. You could have one big mess. You know what, what happened in the past, Chris? They land, lined them up single file, and the restart was just a casual part of the race. You double these guys up, and it's so hard to pass. You're going to get all you can. You're going to drive down the co corner as hard as you can. When you get wound up, wait till that wind blows you down in turn three, like Jimmy was talking about. A gust of wind catches you in the wrong place, like it did Tony Stewart on Thursday afternoon. That car can go into the wall. Look, Tony into the outside wall. Talk to him about that. He said, wind could have got me. I'm not sure something weird happened. Jimmy Johnson just said that tailwind at gust of wind and you're going to go for a wild ride already a lot in the head of the driver at, at 200 miles an hour yeah and you're going 501 miles in this race texas right everything has to always be a little bigger Just a right. bit. <laughs> we'll continue to count you down to the start of the race congrats to the five new nominees for the nascar hall of fame that were announced this week they joined 25 other eligible members and among those for the new hall class on may 23rd rusty wallace and wendell scott we'll have more in just a moment Live here in Texas, Denny Hamlin has won two of the last four races here and had a masterful experience during the off week. Instead of gripping a wheel, he carried the bag at Augusta at the par three tournament for a guy named Bubba. Augusta is just, it's an unbelievable scenery. The landscaping there is, is amazing. The crowd really gets into it, especially on the par three where it's kind of a relaxed atmosphere. A bit off more than I could chew. It was tough to kind of keep up with who needed what club at what time. And it was an unbelievable experience that I would do over uh, a thousand times. And just to be in the clubhouse with those guys in preparation for them going out, it was just an amazing experience. That's really wild. He's already has a win this year. Why is he so good in Texas? Uh, there's horses for courses. He just loves this track. I asked him, why are you so good here? He said, I have no idea. I just like <laughs> the way my car feels there. Plus, he's got some more Toyota power. They've improved those engines. Very confident. Can you imagine a guy named Bubba riding around in General Lee <laughs> with, the, with the master jacket on? Yes. But here's the thing that Hamlin's got going for him. Darren, Gr Darren Grubb. Darian Grubb won this race here last fall with Tony Stewart. That should be a big plus. Crew chief who uh, since made the move. All right, well, uh, Denny Hamlin has had his uh, great adventure. Carl Edwards checked another uh, item off his bucket list, and we're not talking about his three wins here at Texas. In this edition of What in the World is Carl Edwards Doing? You've seen me jump off the stratosphere in Vegas. Ride shotgun with the Thunderbirds. I tried to make Hammond sick in my stunt flight. Eh, it didn't 
didn't really work, I gotta be honest. You were brave enough to ride in a plane with me at the controls to Talladega. But in this edition, you get to see me hang out literally with the Fort Worth SWAT team. That's what, that's what I'm the Fort Worth SWAT team was an amazing group of guys to be around. They're dedicated, they're intense, and they're pretty wild. But all the fun and games are over. We're back here at Texas to get our fast and all fusion to victory lane. Carl puts the thrill in Thrill Seeker. Time now for the thrill of gas and go. Oh. If, if you have questions, they have answers. You're on the clock for both of you. Daryl, I'll start with you. All right, Carl Edwards, Matt Kedz with Greg Biffle, the Roush Fenway Fords. They've won eight races here at this track. Who steps forward tonight? Well, I, I, th I think any one of them could. I, I think all three of those guys are here, really good here. Matt Kemp comes to mind first. Biffle's leading the points. He's running great. Pick one. I'll go with Biffle. I think okay. he's the fastest all of those right. guys. He's the points leader. Uh, uh, which driver, Daryl, or teams made the best use of their off week? I, I, think a, I think everybody did. It was six races on six different racetracks. With all this new technology, all the EFI and the, and the ECU unit where they can download information on these cars, I think it was a great break for everybody. Okay. We'll see who pays off tonight. All right, the other side of that, and this for you, Michael, uh, what about the momentum of Ryan Newman winning, Stuart Haas? Did that affect them? Could that interrupt their flow that often? No, I think that was a chance for them to take a break, celebrate their successes, and get ready to dig at them for another 14 weeks in a row. Best team in racing right now. We will watch closely as Daryl heads up to the play-by-play -play booth. Michael and I will hang out in the Hollywood Hotel and watch the race with you. The start of the race at the Texas Motor Speedway, moments away. This race, the largest attended single-day sporting event in the state of Texas, among the top 20 on an annual basis. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the 75th Division Color Guard out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma, present our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Dr. Roger Marsh of Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries offers tonight's invocation. Heavenly Father, we pause tonight to acknowledge your sovereign power. We thank you so much for who you are and all that you do. We thank you for the freedom to live in these great United States of America. And we pray for those who fight for our freedoms each and every day. And now, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to enjoy the excitement of NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing here at the Great American Speedway. And we ask you to watch over us in everything that happens here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray it. Amen. And here to perform our national anthem, please welcome the lead singer of Foreigner, Kelly Hansen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wait all the land of the free
A special scene here in Texas. And as you get ready to watch the race, you can choose which of the top four qualifiers will finish best in today's race. Text FAST to 34763 or go to at and fastestdriver.com. You'll have a chance to win four Gs. You can play every week and watch for tweets from our own Michael Waltrip during the race brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network. As you get a look at the drivers' families, congratulations to Fox Sports executive producer John Entz and wife Kelly on their new baby, Karis Catherine Entz, joining two other daughters. We're glad you're with us for NASCAR on Fox. Texas Motor Speedway, the very first ever race they had here on the, on the first lap, they had a 13-car wreck. We'll see how they handle it today and where we are, just so you get a sense, 22 miles from Fort Worth, 35 miles from Arlington where the Rangers play baseball. Dallas is 38 miles away. And with his fondness for cowboy hats and horses and horsepower, our Jeff Hammond loves it here. In this week's University of Farmers report, Hammond gets into hashtags. In today's world, it's all about Twitter and hashtag. If you don't believe that, take a look at Casey Kane's car. He's even got a hashtag on the back of his race car. Maybe we can use that to hash out the race tonight. Here in Texas, it's about speed. Speed is king. And when you have speed, well, you got to be careful. Don't beat yourself. And that means drivers, don't miss a shift and blow your engine. That'll get you in trouble each and every time. And that brings us right back where we started from, the speed. Because the later we go in this race, the faster they're going to go. Remember, this track, there's no limit. Thanks, Jeff. Tonight, Farmers Insurance encouraging fans to tweet hashtag Farmers5 on lap 5 to support Casey Kane. Well, Michael, we've talked a little bit about the win and the front row, Martin Truex Jr. and Matt Kenseth, and Dar Darrell will be talking to both of them right before we roll. What do you think we're going to see early here? We talked about how exciting restarts are. Wait till you see this start, Chris. These guys are going to get all they can get. Track position is so important. They're going to be three wide, racing like it's the last lap on the first lap, and they're doing it at over 200 miles an hour. It's very exciting. It's one thing to be fast early, but then to sustain that speed through pit stops, through a 501-mile race. Oh, and by the way, the, through the track Changing. It's a it's light outside now. They're gonna race deep into the dark So uh, they've got a lot to keep up with and these pit crews the crew chiefs will be very challenged with their adjustments Now are there certain you know, there's uh, guys who play well in the wind in golf Are there drivers who are better wind drivers? Well, Tony Stewart got his first victory for his own team in a backup car I think he's gonna win this race tonight He has success here in the past and he likes to he likes to come from behind He likes to fight through adverse conditions. He's got them stacked up tonight All right, the wind gusts have been up to 30 miles per hour. They could get a little crazier as we continue through the evening a long evening of 501 miles of racing let's head back down to the track race fans it's time for those most famous words in motorsports here to give the command please welcome your grand marshal star of the nitro circus franchise multi-time x games gold medalist supercross and motocross champion and four-time rally america champion travis pastrana Gentlemen, start your engines! He had a lot of fun with that. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. You saw Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Jeff Gordon. Those are some of the big name drivers looking for their first win of the year. Will it come tonight? Motor Speedway. Who will survive today? He messed with the bull and he got the horn. <laughs> this is not his first rodeo. We know that. <laughs> Boys have at it. What a night for Kenseth. He will win. Time NASCAR. We welcome you to Sprint Cup Racing from Texas, presented by Farmers Insurance. We'll see three speeds tonight: fast, faster, and fastest. Right now, Michael and I'll toss it up to the guys calling the race as they do every weekend here on Fox. Darrell Walter, Larry McReynolds, Mike Joy, Mike Dale Earnhardt Jr., the top finisher for Hendrick Motorsports the last two races. That powerful team with Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, haven't won in the last 12. Can they challenge those Fords we've been talking about? 
Well, I think they will, Chris. Junior starts 16th, but Rick has two cars in the top 10. There are many, however, who are saying tonight could be a Roush Fenway runaway. Uh, they occupy starting positions two and three. Carl Edwards is out back, but he told me a little while ago he got real loose in qualifying, but he has a fast car, and the Fords will be strong. But, Daryl, we've been off a week, and now we come back to run 500 miles at a very demanding racetrack. Yeah, this is when all those hours in the gym pay off. This is a 500-mile race. This is a grueling race. The speeds are high. It takes a lot of focus, a lot of concentration. you got to stay up on that wheel. you got to hit your marks. And then with the wind carrying you down the back straightaway, like Jimmy Johnson said in our pre-race show, it's the wind gusts that bother you. But you got to be on your toes tonight. And the guy that's in the best shape, he'll be the guy that's running up front tonight at the end of the race. Larry, this is the 23rd Sprint Cup race at Texas. This track's got a little age on it, and it's gotten a little rough over the years. Well, absolutely. Yeah, 500 miles. We're going to have a few cautions, but we're going to have some long green runs. But when this track is as old as it is, it has lost so much grip. It's so hard on the tires. And I think this race will be won by what my driver does on that racetrack and my crew on pit road. This will not be a race that will be won by strategy, two tires staying out. You better get four Goodyear tires every time that caution light comes on. All right, let's have a look at the Geico starting grid for tonight's race. Martin Truex has his seventh career pole. He starts with Matt Kenseth, who makes his best start at Texas. Greg Biffle, who won here in 05, seven straight top tens here, and Mark Martin, the 98 winner. Casey Kane and Ryan Newman, who won at Martinsville just two short weeks ago. Marcus Ambrose, the Aussie, with Brad Keselowski in a Dodge. Top 10 anchored by Jamie McMurray, only his second top 10 Texas start ever. And Jimmy Johnson, who has 16 wins on mile and a half. Then Paul Menard, who led 100 laps yesterday but finished second. And A.J. Allmendinger, who had a career best second a couple of weeks ago at Martinsville. Daryl? Martin Truex, it's a DW. You got a copy? I got you. Hey, buddy, you've had three top ten finishes the last three weeks. Uh, how about tonight? Sitting on the pole, you got a car that can win this thing? Yeah, I think we do. We've, uh, we've had a good weekend here so far, and uh, everybody's done a really nice job on our Monapa Toyota. Car's fast, got speed in it. We just need to uh, keep open the racetrack all night long and uh, be around at the end and see what happens. I think we can do it. All right, my friend, good luck, and uh, have a good one. Thank you guys. Everybody enjoy this one. It's going to be good. Martin Truex from the pole. In fact, five of the drivers starting in the top six spots are past Texas winners, all of them except Truex, the pole sitter. And he, he needs to lead some laps. He hasn't led any laps lately. He needs to lead some laps to win this thing. Let's see if we can get Matt Kenseth. Matt Kenseth, DW, got a copy? Got you, Dovin. Hey, buddy. Um, it seems like everybody's predicting that tonight could be a Roush runaway, and you're the leader of the train. Uh, how's, how do you feel about that? Well, that's what you always hope, hope for, but uh, we've had a, had a good week of practice. The best by four has been, been really fast um, in all the practice sessions. So uh, the bottom line is that you got 500 miles of work to do, and you have to uh, you have to have to figure out how to get it done. So hopefully uh, we'll be close when the race starts here and uh, be able to keep up on our adjustments all night and uh, hopefully be in the mix at then. All right, my friend, good luck, and uh, put her in victory circle. Thank you, sir. All right, a Toyota and a Ford start from the front row tonight in Texas. Let's get downstairs and get late-breaking stories from Pit Road, starting with birthday boy Steve Burns. Thank you very much, Mike. A Roush Fenway driver has been to victory lane 17 times here in Texas, eight times alone in the Cup Series, including at Greg Biffle, a driver you mentioned. Two things for Greg Biffle to be concerned about. As DW said, you've got to watch those tires. Larry Mack said it, too. And Greg Biffle said, Steve, I'm going to win this race from the bottom of the racetrack. Here's my buddy, Matt Yoakum. Thanks, Steve. Denny Hamlin is sixth in the championship standings, 13th on the grid, trying to revert back to Denny Hamlin of 2010 when he swept both races here at Texas. His biggest concern being wicked loose. That came to fruition in Friday night's race. Darian Grubb tightened his cup car up even more. His last win was his last top five. Dick Bergeron? In the pre-race show, you heard about Kyle Busch's struggles here last fall, and you heard about his struggles so far this season. Those struggles continued early in practice where the car just wasn't good. So they borrowed the setup from a teammate 
say Denny Hamlin and by the end of practice Kyle Busch said he's got a car that's capable to win tonight. Here's the vote. Why is Tony Stewart starting way back in 29th? He was confused on Thursday crashing on Friday in a backup car. He just came on the radio and said I'm sorry for all the struggle. This car is better than the one we first had. Look for Tony Stewart to possibly go to victory lane from the back of the pack. Jeff Hammond. Thanks, Krista. And Matt Yoakum's already pointed out, Denny Hamlin won both races here in 2010, but how did he do it? Getting through the center of that corner faster by getting back to the throttle quicker than anybody else. So speed is a king down here in Texas. The center of this corner is going to be real important. You also got to realize that wind is going to play havoc with these drivers when they get there. Thanks, Jeff. Tonight's race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Tonight they'll go 500 miles in the Lone Star State. Hot and a little muggy, 79 degrees. Winds up to 40 miles an hour. 334 laps make up the distance. Pit road speed, 45 miles per hour. The fuel window for Sunoco race fuel, 50 to 54 laps. That could go down a little bit if someone hits pit road and gets those fresh tires. 501 miles. And remember, Casey Kane's sponsor would like you to, right there on the taillight panel, hashtag Farmers5 on lap five to support Casey Kane. Well, there's no better place than for a boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys. The clean start, but that high group didn't get moving. Matt Kenseth backing up from the outside pole back to fourth. Yeah, Mike, he had trouble off turn two and had to really get out of the throttle big time. That's Martin. always a little slick over there, off two. Martin Truex Jr. will lead the first lap from the pole. And really, Mike, that's what he needs to do. He needs to lead some laps because he had not led any laps much this year at all. Greg Biffle right with him. A little bit of a gap to Casey Kane in third. Then Ambrose and Kenseth as they settle in single file back to about 12th place. I believe that guy running second, Larry. That's going to be somebody that's really, really up on the wheel tonight, and it's going to take this thing and try to get it by the horns and wrestle it to the ground. Yeah, we know how bad Greg Biffle in that 16 wants to get the victory lane. It's been well over a year. Two and three wide, deep in the field. Bobby Labonte got caught up high as Regan Smith in the 78. Threads the needle following Jeff Gordon up through. And the 14 of defending Sprint Cup champ Tony Stewart, who wrecked in practice but prior to qualifying, so no penalty for trotting out the backup car because it happened before they qualified. You know, Mike, Tony's just like his hero, A.J. Foyt. Make it hard. Let me, let me make it hard so I can have fun making this up. Carl Edwards passing David Reagan. Reagan, a former pole sitter here, and of course, Carl knows the way to victory lane in Texas very well. Daryl, it just appears in the early stages of this race that not a lot of drivers are venturing off the bottom of the racetrack. I think it'll take a few laps before we start working that second groove in. Yeah, Larry, they got to kind of dust it off. They'll just inch up a little, they'll get that bottom working, and then they'll start moving up everybody, a car or two wheel, and the first thing you know, somebody will start making a lot of good lap times, and everybody will go to the top. Single file back through 17 positions. Michael. You know, Darrell, I talked to a couple of the drivers down in the garage area, and they say this tire isn't conducive to running that high line like we've seen it in the past. Oh, sure, you can go up there and make time, but it seems like they like being on the bottom better this time around. That'll be interesting to follow. We're used to see them scrubbing that wall up high, as Casey Kane will be one of the first guys up there. He ventured halfway up there that turn. Yeah, I think what we'll see is the tires wear and the, the bottom kind of gives up and gets harder and harder to run down there. You just automatically slip up the hill whether you want to or not. You're always able to run around the bottom like this on fairly new tires, on new tires, but it's when the tires start to give up a little bit. You really have much choice but to start letting the car go up the hill. 
I've been watching this 11 car with Denny Hamlin started back in the 13th position. He swept the races here a couple of years ago, and he has made his way to the top 10, even though he's under fire from Jimmy Johnson in that 48. That's for 10th place. And that battle decided for now in favor of Johnson. Jamie McMurray way up the track <laughs> in turn one. I, I was going to say, Mike, he's found the high groove. Perhaps he's, by design because he wanted a launch against Mark Martin down the backstretch. And, that, and that's where it really pays off. So much fast speed. He got up high down in three and four. He saw that that had a lot of grip, had some speed. He used that to his advantage, made the pass on Mark Martin off turn two. Now that three and four line he just ran, that may be a little too high right now because he lost that spot back to Mark Martin in the 55. Tries the same thing in turn one this time. Wind it up top, drop to the bottom, get the run down the back straightaway. That's where it is. I mean, you get such, you can get back in the throttle up high like that. You just, it looks like you got 50 more horsepower, but it's really the car's just freer, comes up off the corner with a lot more speed. They are fighting for sixth place. Just about three seconds off the lead right now. And I'm not so sure that uh, that McMurray didn't take Mark by surprise because he did get up there so high and he kind of got by Mark. And I think Mark maybe didn't know he was out there until the spotter hollered at him. Martin Truex lapping rookie Josh Wise. Scott Riggs has made a pit stop coming back on track. A lap down. Reed Sorensen, Dave Blaney, and J.J. Yaley also one lap down as we're nine laps in in Texas. Martin Truex has led them all. Well, he's been, Truex has been on a tear lately. I mean, the last three races of last year, he had some top ten finishes. He started the first six races this year with consistent top ten finishes. He's a guy that's really sitting there waiting to win a race. We've talked about the Fords, primarily the Roush Fords. Don't forget the two Richard Petty Fords, led by Marcus Ambrose in the nine, who moves up into third place ahead of Casey Kane. You know, Marcus is sitting there, Larry, and, and he and Todd Parrott, they got to win a race. And this is a racetrack that Todd Parrott's won at before with Elliott Sadler. So seeing Marcus run good doesn't surprise me a bit. Yeah, it's almost like that five car of Casey Kane. He's starting to back up. In fact, Matt, he just lost a position to Matt Kenseth in the 17. And he just told his team, Larry Mack, that the car really loose on entry and surprisingly even looser across the center of the corner. And he said, Silky, this wind is absolutely crazy. Riding with Kevin Harvick, just ahead of Kyle Busch. And Harvick in 13th place, working the high groove. And, and, and I don't want to disagree with Michael necessarily, but I think you're going to find in this a little bit, everybody will be running up a little higher. They run the bottom on new tires because that's got a lot of grip. Tires wear off. Cars are going to find the top. Scott Speed, Mike Bliss, and Landon Castle have made unscheduled pit stops. Castle's car steaming a bit. I've seen several drivers hit pit road already. Dave Blaney in the 36 being one, and they focused on cleaning the grill. We've talked about the wind. That's an, another thing that happens with the wind. It's blowing a lot of grass and a lot of trash around that gets on the front end opening and blocks that up. It, it's not that uncommon here because there's no grandstand down off a of turn two over there, and all the way down the back and through the infield, they get such a wind, it picks up all kind of stuff and blows it on the track. Martin Truex Jr. won his first poll at Texas and his most recent poll yesterday. He's led every lap here. Open happiness. 20 laps in. Here at Texas, Martin Truex Jr. leading Greg Biffle now by just about six tenths of a second. The second generation New Jersey driver got his very first Sprint Cup poll right here. This is his second uh, at Texas, but it's only his second top 10 start of the year. Whatever, they have found something here. He is fast. He's led every lap, and he leads our Toyota top performers of the race right now with Mark Martin in the top five, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch in the top 15, Clint Boyer in the top 20. 
Yeah, we're getting about halfway through a fuel run, and I think we're starting to see some drivers that their car is going away, Denny Hamlin being one of them. He had cracked the top ten just a handful of laps ago, and then, of course, we've talked about Casey Kane in that five who's falling all the way back to tenth right now. Steve Burns. Mike, listening to Greg Biffle and his crew on the radio, his spotter, Joel Edmonds, has given Greg a heads up when the wind really starts to gust towards turn four. Greg just said the car is loose in, and I'm sliding the nose. This wind is also putting some trash on the grill of these race cars, Biffle's included. Yeah, but, Larry, you know, you talk about the cars, and some are loose. Most of them are all loose from what I'm hearing. But you just think about the practice schedule we went through here. We never had a practice when it was like this at this hour of the evening. So these guys are really, uh, they're, they're probably got their cars set up with a lot of adjustment in them so they can get them dialed in for later on in the evening. 12th place race, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s 88. Started 16th, and he is passing his Hendrick teammate, Casey Kane, who started top five. And Carl Edwards has something to say about this in the 99. Yeah, I think Casey was letting his maybe letting Dale Jr. slide by on the outside and Carl said, whoa, if you're going to slow down that much, I'll just go too. But this deep in a run, this has to make Carl Edwards and his team feel pretty good in that 99 car. Started back in 20th and now he's working on trying to crack the top 10. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth up in third place may have an issue. Matt? Combo issues, Mike, for Kenseth. He says, number one, the possibly trash on the grill. He was having Mike Kalnoff look at it. It looks semi-clean. The temperature had climbed up to well over 255 degrees, the water. And then his other concern, it smelled like something was burning inside the race car, like possibly a rag had been left in the car and fallen down inside the rocker panel. He says, definitely smells like something's burning. Can't help, can't help you with that one. No trash on the grill that we can see, man. No, it's, it looks pretty clean. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot you can do about that. And Kenseth running competitive lap times. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick in eighth place, Larry, is the quickest car on the racetrack. And I've been watching Kevin Harvick. He started back in the 15th position. He's moved up to the, to the eighth spot. And watching our scoring monitor, he definitely has the fastest laps right now. But look where he's running. I think this is what Daryl pointed out. You get this deep into a run, that's where you start moving is up the racetrack hunting more grip. Sure, you're, I, ideally you'd like to run around the bottom because why, Mike? It's the short way around. There you go. <laughs> Up front, Martin Truex has company. Greg Biffle is there. They have lapped past the 33 of Tony Raines. Meanwhile, Mike Bliss has gone to the garage, and they just pushed Scott Speed's car back to the garage area. Lapping past J.J. Yaley is our race leader, Truex. And, and when the car gets loose, you just run the co you run in the corner a little higher. You don't have to turn down in the corner so hard. You don't have to turn the wheel to the left so hard. It's a little more forgiving as you make a little higher entry and run a little easier line, a little bigger radius around the top of the track. But that traffic has allowed the 17 of Kenseth, who comes into tonight's race as the favorite, to close up on his Ford teammate Biffle and Truex's Toyota. Larry, you don't reckon that Kenseth uh, took a page out of Carl Edwards' playbook and he thought he would mess with the Jimmy Finning a little bit, do you? I don't know if, if he's got quite that sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was Friday the 13th, but April Fool's Day long over. Stick around for more NASCAR on Fox. 34 green flag laps completed in Texas. New leader, Greg Biffle. Put his Ford out in front of Martin Truex Jr. and Matt Kenseth. Ambrose and Martin, the top five. Here's the pass for the lead. Yes, sir, and I think Martin knew that uh, Biffle was a little quicker. Martin dropped to the bottom, let Biffle take the outside. They do a little drag race here off the corner, but that momentum off of two with the 16 car of Biffle makes the pass and moves on away. I think he's the man I'm telling you he looks good. Mark Martin, uh, rather, Martin Truex led the first 31 laps of this race. As we pick up the battle for sixth, here comes Harvick. Kevin Harvick gets such a run off the corner by keeping it wound up running that high line versus where Jimmy in the 48 was running there. And I guarantee you that spotter is saying, telling all the other spot, the other spotters are telling them, get up there where Harvick is. Harvick started 15th. He's up to sixth, Dick. 
Well, Jimmy Johnson right now is running right in front of him, right behind him as the positions change. Uh, Johnson has, from time to time, had the fastest car on several of these laps. They are, however, concerned that they are leaning so hard on that right rear tire that the setup may not last through a long fuel run. Thanks, Dick. Meanwhile, Ryan Newman, last week's winner, first off second place. Here comes Kenseth. And he will pass Martin Truex. Uh, the engine of the train just took the lead, and the caboose of the train has just taken over second place. Now here's Trevor Bain battling Ryan Newman. Bain at 18th. Newman working to take over that position, but Steve Newman started sixth. What's up? Yeah, he's dropped all the way from six to 19. He says, I'm spending too much time pedaling it. He said the back end, it feels like it's yawed out. Wow. That's pretty much the same thing that caught these drivers and their teams off guard in the November race here. The, the concept or the thought process, the track cools down and gets rubbered in, that the car tightens up. You know, it will, it will not turn as good, but it looks like that the drivers, their cars are getting looser. Some time ago, we said Harvick was the quickest car in the racetrack, and he just rocketed past Mark Martin and up into the top five. Michael McDowell has gone to the garage area, joining Scott Riggs and Scott Speed. Mike Bliss has come back out. He is laps down, but back out and running. 39 green flag laps complete. When will we expect those first pit stops? Well, as far as a fuel window, we're probably looking at about anywhere from 10 to 12 laps. But, Mike, as I said at the top of the show, if one of these top running drivers hits pit road to get those fresh tires because our pace has slowed down about two and a half seconds, then you can't be far behind. It'll be like a chain reaction. Kevin Harvick. Flashes past Marcus Ambrose and into fourth place. 40 laps complete in the Samsung Mobile 500. Greg Biffle comes to pit road. Dick? Well, Greg Biffle started in the 17th position in car number 18. The car has not been as good as they had hoped. Steve? Well, Dick, Greg Biffle saying he's been sliding the nose of the race car when he's in the corners. He called for the adjustment. He said, I want one round. Harvick in and out, Logano coming. Krista? Martin Truex, our pole sitter, is in his pit stall. He's been complaining about being a little bit loose. Free in, tight in the center, and loose off. The team's saying, Martin, you're doing a great job. Matt? And Matt Kent is complaining he needs help more in the first third of the corner, trying to also clean some of that rubber off the grill. The car has no front grip, Dick. Johnson is in on pit road as well. The car was much better earlier on the run when the tires were fresher in comparison to the others than later in the run. The car is loose going in, tight in the center, and good coming on. Krista. Marcus Ambrose complaining about some trash on the grill early in this race. Not a problem now. Now his problem is a loose condition. They're making an adjustment for him. Tony Stewart will be the last of the leaders uh, to make his pit stop. At lap 47, Krista. Tony Stewart also in. Remember, he started all the way back in 29. They've slowly been gaining ground. He said the because he said the front end of the car is good. That's the problem they had with the primary car in practice. No front grip. He said the front end is good on this one. Casey Kane had a little trouble on pit road, getting blocked in uh, by Bobby Labonte. Things happen fast here under the green flag. Here's what happened. See, Casey Kane and five was about, he was finished with his pit stop. Bobby Labonte's coming in with the 47. Daryl, this is where you always like to have communication under green flag stops with the with your neighbor about when are you coming in, here's when we're coming in. If I if I were the driver, I'd be very upset with my crew chief that you didn't hold me, or tell me he was coming in or that you brought me in at the same time he was coming in. Come and on, I guys. I can't fault Labonte because he was stopped as deep in his box as he could get without being over the line. He tried to get as far from Casey Kane as he could. Listen, you're sitting right next to the guy, the other team. All you got to do is say, you coming in when, and I'll come in right after you or before you. Yeah, or I'll come in a lap early. After, yeah. I mean, it's a little communication there. And that was costly for Casey Kane. He was 13th when the pit stop cycle began. You see that he has now dropped six more spots.
Greg Biffle was our race leader before pit stops. He had a one second lead on Matt Kenseth. Kevin Harvick was fourth, 2.7 back, and now Harvick is only one second back. He's now the second place car. So Kevin Harvick made a big gain on that pit stop. You know, A.J. Allmendinger was running outside the top 20. He is now running 14th, but Krista hit pit road pretty early. Yeah, and he had to, Larry Mack, because the handling on the car was just awful. I talked to him before he jumped into the race car for this race. He said, I just don't know what we're going to have. Well, what he had, he didn't like. He said, I don't know what we've done to the car. It is way bad, too tight. They had to come in early to get him some adjustments. But he essentially was the driver that started the epidemic. Once he came, all the other drivers had to come over the next few laps to get those fresh tires. But this makes perfectly good sense. You're going to have adjustability in your car to, to, to keep up with the track changes. 51 laps complete, all under green in Texas. NASCAR on Fox, presented by Farmers, is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Martin Truex led the first 31 laps of this race. Greg Biffle went out front for 19 circuits before uh, pit stops began. Matt Kenseth and Marcus Ambrose each led a lap uh, during the pit stop exchange. Biffle out front now by still one second over Kevin Harvick with Truex third. Kenseth and Mark Martin, the top five. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Coming up on 60 laps complete in Texas, Greg Biffles Ford leads Kevin Harvick Chevrolet and that gap has remained constant, right at 1.1 seconds. Martin Truex Jr. on Harvick's bumper, pretty much. Then Matt Kenseth, Mark Martin, no change in the top five. Marcus Ambrose, sixth. We've had one round of green flag pit stops. Everybody got four Goodyear tires and Sunoco race fuel. and got right back at it. I'm watching the scoring monitor. Our first eight cars are all running within one-tenth of each other. That is just, I mean, you can lay a blanket over the first eight or nine cars there. And here comes our pole sitter, Martin Truex, on the bottom in the 56. They tried to split the 33 of Tony Raines, and Harvick holds him off for now. It's just hard to beat Kevin Harvick off the corner right now with him running that high groove, keeping that engine wound up in that 29 car. Truex settles back in Harvick's draft and goes to the bottom as Harvick chooses the high road. They got company coming back there too. Matt Kenseth in that yellow and blue number 17 car running in the fourth position started on the outside of the front row. Larry, I tell you, that wind right now is as strong, I think, as I've seen it all night. The flagpole, the flag itself is just straight out, and the flagpole is actually bowed over. Uh, that's got to just be messing with these guys' minds on what they need to do to their cars. Well, I love what you said in the pre-race, DW. What you felt it doing to watch your 50, 60,000-pound motor coach, what is it doing to these 3,500-pound race cars? Bobby Lavani is a lap down, but last time by, he in 11th place, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had uh, quite a moment here. Junior. I think... I think I don't know quite what to make of it. I, you know, the only thing I can say is Bobby Labonte kind of slid up in front of Junior, a lot like we, we saw it, uh, maybe it was uh, Las Vegas, when Mark Martin kind of slid up in front of Junior like that, and he gave him a little tap, and I don't think Bobby liked that or was ready for it. Now, Bobby Labonte is running one lap down back in the 32nd position, but he's the third driver one lap down trying to get to be the first driver to get the free pass should the caution come out. But, but that's when the driver gets very annoyed. When a guy's a lap down, you're faster than he is. You're going by him, and he slides up in front of you and breaks your momentum. You know, a little bump. I can understand that. Darrell with Truex on the bottom and Harvick up top. Is this fun racing, or does it get aggravating that no matter what line you choose, you're right next together? Aggravating. <laughs> <laughs> 
Matt Yoakum, what's up with the 17? Issues continue for Matt Kenseth. Now Matt believes he's got a loose, possibly left front wheel. The guys are on the wall. Matt said, I absolutely cannot make it a full fuel run. Expect him to hit pit road, at least from what he says in the next lap or two. Boy, I tell you what, they have a, they've started the night off with all kind of issues. And, uh, you know, that pit crew is absolutely, Larry, in my opinion, the best on pit road. They very seldom make a mistake. That is very unusual. Yeah, it's very rare that either Matt Kenseth or his pit crew ever makes a mistake during a pit stop, whether it be under green or yellow. Now, we talked about trash on the grill, which is below the bumper line of the car, down in that spoiler area. It looks all black. Much of that is tape. They tape up much of the grill, but also some of that black we looked at during commercial uh, on, our, on uh, our Fox News. Yellow, yellow, yellow. As caution is out for debris. What we found was this track is so rough, there's a lot of rubber debris that's getting into the grill of these cars and causing some of them to run a little hot. And this is a huge break for Matt Kenseth because yes, I think he was about to hit pit road with what he thought was a loose wheel. Hmm. Somebody lost a cap. Well, I don't know where it came from. I'm sure out of the grandstand, you see some more paper right there, but a lot of drivers do carry their hats in the car with them. Rick Hendrick, car owner, standing behind crew chief Chad Knauss. Still waiting and hoping for that 200th career victory in the Sprint Cup Series. Thought he had it at Martinsville. We all thought he had it at Martinsville. Thought Jeff Gordon had made the winning pass. It turned out not to be. Well, you see these crews ready on pit road, and as we talked at the top of the show, won't be any strategy here. It'll be four tires and pack that thing full of Sunoco race fuel. You know, Larry, to win championships and win races, you've got to have things go your way, and that for the 17, that's pivotal right there, man. Pit road is open. Matt Yoakum's first. Looking to keep up with the racetrack. Kevin Harvick wants a slight wedge adjustment for the 29 machine, but still pretty pleased, especially later in the run. Meanwhile, Matt Kenseth, he wants to clean the grill also. They're going to go four tires so they can make sure they absolutely get the right loose wheel, Steve Burns. Matt, Greg Bibble really likes his race car, but he doesn't want to leave it the way it is. He said to Matt Pugh, to his crew chief, let's go down on the track bar one and a half rounds. He'll also get four tires, Krista. Martin Truex said his team got helped him fix the center, but it's still loose in and off. He said, with that adjustment, I'm more loose in than anything. Please help me find the right combination. Martin Truex's team working on the four tires right now. And it'll be Truex first off of pit road. Matt Kenseth is third behind Greg Biffle. And Kevin Harvick, everything he gained on that last stop, Larry, it looks like they gave up. It took him a ton of laps to get there, and it took him about 14 seconds to lose it. 68 laps complete. We're under caution in Texas. When cows fly, <laughs> well, the winds is gusting to 40 miles an hour plus. Hats off to our cameraman up on the roof. Hope you're tied down up there. And David Reagan's Ford is the Aaron's lucky dog. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. He gets back uh, on the lead lap. First car one lap down at the time of caution. Kevin Harvick had a rough pit stop, and you see uh, the crew time versus Martin Truex plus three seconds there. And here's why. Watch the right rear tire changer. After that first, Jimmy Johnson with some trash on the grill. And you can see trash on the grill. And what you'll see, you'll see this crew member look at it. He'll go to swipe it, but he elects not to. I think they've been monitoring Jimmy Johnson's temperatures, and he was not running that warm, so they elected to leave it on there. 70 laps complete. KFC Fresh Start. Come in today and taste why fresh is better at KFC. I think that crew member elected not to get run over. <laughs> Back under green after the first caution flag of the night. This one for Debris. And it's a drag race off turn two. That high line, baby. Get that momentum up off the corner. Drag race down the back for everybody. And Truex wants to hold that lead against Greg Biffle and Matt Kenseth. That low line should be pretty good with these new tires for a few laps. But it's Biffle up high, and the Biff will lead this lap.
Boy, that is hard. It is so hard to get off in a corner with somebody on your outside like that without it trying to suck that crawl on the inside right around. You have to really be on your toes. We True. did get word that Matt Kenseth, they, they showed no signs of having a loose wheel okay. when they changed those four tires on his car. Hey, when you play with those air pressures, Larry, sometimes you get that inner liner, the air in it a little bit too low, it'll shake inside the wheel till the tire, till the uh, pressures build up. And we took a second look during commercial at Dale Earnhardt Jr., who did get in the back of Bobby Labonte, with Labonte any, uh, brushing the back stretch wall. So Greg Biffle goes back out front for the second time tonight. He has now led 37 laps more than anyone else. How about a Saturday night? Crank it up. half a second apart at 76 laps into this race one brief caution for debris at least two drivers got by with just two tires on that pit stop uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart were told each took two not four yeah Tony Stewart was one of the last drivers to make a green flag pit stop they still had 20 laps on those tires he went from 28th to 12th I think this could be a short-term gain they need a caution not too far down the road but I tell you guys it's really made some great moves Larry and that's the 24 car he's up to 12th place now Jeff Gordon started back in what 36 I think it was and they've done a nice job he was making some uh, progress before the pit stops and now he's really in good shape Matt Kenseth has moved his Ford up to second place he's passed Truex with Jimmy Johnson looking in in the 48. in fifth started fourth he too closing in on the leaders he's about one and a half seconds back Larry, I think the cautions have really fallen just right for these guys to be able to get the adjustments they need and make adjustments to the car based on the track conditions that are going to change a little bit here over the next uh, 50 laps there's Jimmy Johnson moving to third as Mark Martin closes in on his Michael Walter racing teammate Martin Truex. Mark Martin is an amazing individual. When the track opened for practice on Thursday, he left pit road, set the fastest lap of that practice, and no one came close to bettering it during that whole two hours. Takes an awful lot of people to put on a race. Uh, it's a large, it's a large class up at the control tower. Here's Jeff Hammond at the University of Farmers. Yeah, we're inside race control, folks. I mean, you take a look here behind me, you can see this is where the ebb and flow of the race actually originates from. David Hoots is controlling the race right now. He's the one, in case we have a caution flag, will make those kind of decisions. But any any kind of decisions are made from right inside here because whether it's on pit road or the racetrack, this is where it originates. You can see up on the screen right here, the big screen. NASCAR also has the ability to watch the race and see it from different angles and different camera positions. And in the event they need to do instant replay, they can do that. For instance at the end of a race green white checker and something needs to be decided they go to these big screens and these instant replays this is where it's all happening now it's calm right now it's really under green conditions everything's very quiet very basically subdued but in the event of a caution flag this place turns it almost like a pit stop for a pit crew they spring into action safety vehicles are moved immediately to different locations everything starts happening fast and furious this is truly the heartbeat of this race in this control area Thanks, Jeff. 
Daytona 500 winner Matt Kenseth gave a thank you wave out the window to his Roush Fenway Ford teammate Greg Biffle as they exchanged positions one and two. So Kenseth has now led for the second time tonight. He led one lap during the green flag pit stop exchange. I think there's something going on with that 88 car Dale Jr. He came off two last time by just about stopped and a bunch of cars got up on him and passed him and now uh, he's been under attack here by the 22. What's going on Dick? Well he hasn't been particularly specific about what is going on Daryl but he has told the crew he just can't drive it. Boy I'll say he just got his hands full right now. He almost spun that thing off turn two a couple of laps ago. Yeah, Kyle Busch passed him uh, with relative ease and look how Kyle yards him right in turn two by a car length or more. Well you know what I think it is uh, Mike I think that win even though it's pushing them down the back I think it hits you right the first time you really feel it is off turn two and I think it's really affecting these cars off that corner. But you know Darrell you talked about the caution we've only had that one caution and that was the first real good opportunity for the driver and their team to make pretty substantial adjustments you almost wonder did they go the wrong way with an adjustment or did they jump the fence put too much of an adjustment in it that's that's the gamble you take when it, you know if the driver's screaming or something wrong with the car you want to make a take a big swing at it as they say sometimes you jump the fence Mark Martin has just passed Jimmy Johnson for third place Dick well, Jimmy Johnson has had a pretty good car, Mike. Uh, he started in the 10th spot. He's picked up six positions since the drop of the green flag. Two of those spots were on the last pit stop, where the pit crew really cranked off a good one. They are aware of the paper on the nose of that car, however, and are trying to come up with a plan to get rid of it. So far, water temperature is okay in Jimmy Johnson's car. We've probably got about 25 to 30 laps before we will have green flag pit stops if we go caution free. Dale Earnhardt Jr. under attack by teammate Casey Kane in the five and Clint Boyer in the 15. They ran Jr. pretty far up the racetrack down in one and two. Looks like that's the one place that his car would work and he's able Daryl to hold them off for now. I think that's what's happened to him though. He was running the bottom and everybody was getting all over him and he couldn't drive the car. So I think by accident he got up high and now he says oh maybe this is where I need to be because I'm moving along pretty good right here. And he normally loves running the high line at most of these mile and a half tracks. You would think. At eighth place Jamie McMurray in the one. Brad Keselowski Jeff Gordon Gordon just keeps coming Mike Larry he just keeps picking them off yep. one at a time he's got a great car right now from 34th to 10th Steve and Mike they just told Jeff Gordon welcome to the top 10 buddy welcome to the party and you talked about it he had a terrible qualifying effort they were way too loose his car is better down in one and two Matt Steve the night has taken a turn for the worst for Kevin Harvick and he hit pit road he was looking to adjust his race car to the win but due to the issues on the right rear he lost all that track position now he's having to deal with being back in traffic the car absolutely plowing and to make matters worse debris on the grill the temperature well over 260 degrees. Kevin Harvick had uh, the right rear tire changer had trouble on Harvick's car missed a lug nut dropped one put one back on tripped coming around the car and Kevin said this. We've been keeping our mouth shut now it's time to not keep our mouth shut. Uh, just had a slug nut on the right rear you know we had to get it not get a penalty so let's just buckle back in it's early we'll be fine next run we had a good one the first time we'll be fine here just keep your composure. I like that. Yep. You know, Shane Wilson is talking to Kevin in a, in a calm voice. He didn't get excited. Hey, you know, driver, you know, uh, he was real calm, laid it out for him. Kevin understood, pushes on. But after challenging for the lead, that's got to be tough on a pit stop to then have to come from behind. It'll tick you off. <laughs> 90 laps complete. Matt Kenseth out front of Greg Biffle by one second in Texas. Over. 95 laps complete. We're under the second caution of the day. Uh, Trevor Bain, last year's Daytona 500 winner, racing for the Wood Brothers, running in 26th place, got up and into the wall up in turn number three to bring out the second caution flag. 
uh, David Rudiman will get the free pass. And normally I'd say, well, he's got a lot of damage he probably done for the night. But these cars are so resilient, you can knock the wall down with them and come in, beat the fenders out, and go again. Let's talk about the two-tire strategy in the last run. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fell from 11th to 16th on two tires. Tony Stewart restarted 13th. He got track position, but fell to 27th. That science project is complete, Matt. The car was free for Matt Kenseth, but he also thinks that was because of the debris on the grill. They're going to pull tape because of the water and oil temperature. Meanwhile, Mark Martin says his car, he wants it to be just a tick tighter for this next run, Dick Bergeron. Jimmy Johnson in the lower right of your screen said that the control, the adjustments that they've had in the last pit stop work, so a little more of that. Steve. Greg Biffle had some trash on the grill. They've cleaned that off. Also a wedge adjustment in the left rear. Krista. Martin Truex saying he has no rear grip at all. He says, I need something stronger than the adjustment you gave me last time. Last time it was air pressure. This time it's track bar. The team got him out first the last time. Not this time. Again. Nope, Martin Truex. Tell you what, that uh, that 48, that 48's crew, Jimmy Johnson's yep. crew, he cleaned the grill and they still smoke him with their pit stop. That number one pit stall, though, that's the tip, baby. Look at that. They're taking all that stuff off the grill. Second caution of the day for Trevor Bain. There's Martin Truex winning the race off pit road from Greg Biffle and Jimmy Johnson. Network, AT&T, rethink possible. Nearing the 100 lap, 334 here in Texas in time for an AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network. Rethink possible. Four leaders and 10 different lead changes. We started with wind gust that went from 30 up to 40 miles per hour. That's Greg Biffle passing the pole sitter Martin Truex Jr. The Biff leading 46 laps in the race. Kevin Harvick worked his way up into the top five, but in the pits lost seven spots and said, we don't need to make it harder that it looks just change the blank lug nuts. Meanwhile, he slipped back and has had some problems on lap 82. There was actually earlier something out on the track bringing out a caution which benefited Matt Kenseth who was complaining because of a vibration and it helped him work his way back into the top five currently fourth Carl Edwards moments ago heading in and there's Trevor Bain who had some problems as well brought out a caution he talked about that car just getting sideways down in turn three, Chris. The wind could have been an assist there. You're a little bit loose anyway. Thing gets sideways into the outside wall. Carl Edwards comes back to pit road. The team wasn't confident that they got all the lugs replaced properly, Chris. This is a bad break. We've seen how hard it is to drive from the back to the front. The only guy that's done it is Jeff Gordon. He's got a really strong car tonight. Also, Tony Stewart, who started 29th, the two-time champ, of course, won this race back in November. You listen on the radio when they weren't doing so well. Very businesslike. Like reminds you of the demeanor he had during the chase when he won five of the ten races. What a champion Tony Stewart was last fall and to hold it all together like he did earlier today. Uh, people can take a lesson from that man. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. complaining his car is a little bit too tight, said he can't drive it like this. Steve Letard, his crew chief, <coughs> trying to coach him through it. Let's see how the drivers are doing in the AT&T Fastest Driver Challenge. Remember to text FAST to 34763 or go to FastestDriver.com for a chance to win four Gs. That's AT&T's Fastest Driver Challenge brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network. Let's head back upstairs to Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. Getting ready for the restart. 235 laps to go. It's a KFC fresh start. Coming today and taste why fresh is better at KFC. Biffle Truex, Johnson Kenseth, Ambrose Martin. The top three rows as they get three wide down there. Just for a bit. Boy, these restarts, they are hair raising. My gosh, you just take all kind of chances on this re on the restarts. We see this every week. Just have to be so aggressive. But Daryl, I think these drivers are truly wanting to take advantage while they can of those four fresh Goodyear tires before they start to lose grip. Yeah, well, you got them all right there in front of you, and you got four tires on. That makes you brave, I can tell you that. Biffle got the lead. The battle was briefly for fourth. Matt Kenseth takes over that spot from Ambrose. It's Biffle, Johnson, Truex, Kenseth, and Ambrose, with Martin dropping to sixth ahead of Keslowski. And Jeff Gordon is up to eighth from 34th. What a drive he's had tonight. Boy, he has. And he's done it real quietly. I mean, I just noticed him. He kind of got up in the top 20, and then he got up into the top 15. Here he is in the top 10.
Jimmy Johnson challenges for the lead. You know, Larry, I remember Chad Canal saying, I think it might have been latter part of last year, that they had started working on a package for racing, that they had had fast cars. Remember, Jimmy hadn't won a pole in a long time. And he said they started working on the car so they would race better. Maybe they've added some kind of more downforce to the car for the race, making these cars not qualify good, but really come to the front in the race. They've definitely changed their approach in practice, working on race setup versus qualifying before qualifying. Greg Biffle by four tenths of a second. Jimmy Johnson trying to become the first Chevy dealer uh, driver to, well, he's a dealer too. First Chevy driver to lead this race tonight. It's been all Ford and Toyota in the front spot. I tell you, I just think it's going to be mighty hard to wrestle a lead away from Jeff, uh, from uh, Greg Biffle. I could just see it in his, and Biffle's got so much confidence right now. His crew chief and him are on the same page. He's leading the points. He's had a bunch of great finishes already. He wants to win. Steve? Hey, hey DW, I'll tell you how much confidence he has right now. When he took the lead, he keyed the radio and said, good night. <laughs> I believe that too, man. He just, he just, he just see it. I feel it in him. Well, he's a driver who doesn't play head games. You know, Greg Biffle is going to run every single lap, every bit as fast as he can. Jeff Hammond, where's Hammond? Mike, right now I'm on top of a pit box, but behind me, look at the flags. They are still whipping it. I mean, just 30 to 40 miles an hour. The wind is gusting down here. That's what's getting these guys in trouble. Remember, at the start of the race, we were concerned about turn three with a 21 car. Pretty sure that wind got him down in turn three. And, and, and Jeff and Mike Larry, we're making a big deal out of the wind, folks, because it is a big deal. It is affecting the cars, how they handle, how they drive, and what these drivers are telling their crew chief. Well, we've already seen how much it's affected debris getting on the driver's grill and making them overheat. Nobody's going home with sunburn from tonight's race, but the folks sitting up in turn four are going to be badly windburned when this one's over. 35 to 40 miles an hour. Sustained gusts of wind here. Now, Carl Edwards made a late stop to check the lug nuts, Krista, and he really hasn't come that far forward since, has he? No, but, you know, he said, guys, it was the right thing to do. They were worried that the lug nuts were loose on the right rear, so they said, let's come in now under caution rather than get back out there under green flag conditions. Carl even saying, guys, we have to think championship. It's only seven races in, but he's thinking big picture, especially after what happened last year, losing it the way they did. And, and remember what Brad Kazowski told us it was like when you get back there like it. It's like you're in a bubble. And you can't get enough speed. You can't make enough, get enough run on a guy to bust out of that bubble, that bubble of air. And that's what happens. To, that's what's happened to Carl. He's trapped back there. Carl's the last car on the lead lap in 30th. We're looking to Brad Keselowski, who's the highest dodge in the race in seventh. His teammate Almondinger right behind him. They're definitely going the right direction with those two drivers' dodges because Brad Keselowski qualified eighth. He almost fell outside the top 20, but he's been working his way back to the front. They are our Dodge Chargers of the race. Yesterday, Keslowski appropriated Steve Burns' microphone and interviewed another driver. Now, I don't think he's auditioning for our seat, but you never know. Drivers are just like that. You know, you give them a microphone. <laughs> I'm looking at the scoring monitor again, Larry. Everybody's running 60, 69, 64, 65, 66, 63. All right there, same speed. When I look at his teammate, A.J. Allmendinger, who two weeks ago at Martinsville finished second to Ryan Newman, I just think that puts so much confidence in he and his race team. It's actually the first race of 2012, Krista, where they didn't have something happen during the race. And remember, Larry, they started off this race just terrible, having to make an early pit stop. Well, they removed the spring rubber from their stop on lap 70. That solved their problem. This last adjustment, just air pressure. They are now direction here in prime time. Thanks, Krista. And if you were worried about Dale Jr., well, they've got him fixed up. He's back up into the top 10. And back to Almendinger just real quickly. Almendinger, I don't think he's worried about his confidence as a driver. I think runs like that mean so much to that team. It does so much for the crew chief and the pit crew and for everybody. It gives them a little extra morale, really puts some pep in their step and gives the driver a better car. You better look in his mirror. Jeff Gordon's coming. <laughs> Gordon has marched from 34th up to 9th, and he and Almendinger traded places once a few laps ago.
And right behind Gordon is his Hendrick teammate, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dick. Well, Earnhardt certainly likes his car a whole lot better now, Mike. But we're looking at the number 18 as well, Kyle Busch, who early in the race was very disappointed in the behavior of the car. He told the crew that they just had to fix it. The car was junk. They did. He's in 11th. Lead. Lead change. Oh boy, five time. Jimmy Johnson. Remember me? <laughs> Back goes to the front for the first time tonight. Jimmy Good. Johnson just said, You got two things I want the lead of the race and the point lead, and I want them both. You know, if you think about uh, Greg Bipple saying goodnight, everybody, who's usually the one that wakes people up, Daryl? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he just, just got a little wake-up call, Michael. I'm here, bud, and I'm going to be here. Yeah, I definitely thought it was awfully early for Greg Biffle to be telling all the other drivers goodnight. We still got a long way to go. You know, Daryl, we've talked about the bottom and the top. So far, the race has been led on the bottom of the racetrack. Jimmy Johnson went to the middle and grabbed the lead, but most of the guys have dedicated themselves to the bottom. The only guy that could really make them run on the top is a guy that loves the top, Kevin Harvick. But uh, some interesting lines here around the track at Texas. That middle groove looks fast. Yeah, I, I think that's the point, Michael. I think it just depends on your car. If, you get, if the car's working, you're going to run the bottom. If it's off a little, you might move up in the middle. And if it's off a lot, you might move up around the top. But that's what everybody likes about this place. You can kind of run all over it. Just find a place your car's happy. A lot of good battles shaping up. Johnson has passed Biffle for the lead. Truex stalks Kenseth for third. And here comes Jeff Gordon once again after Almendinger for eighth place. With Earnhardt getting closer. Just appears, oh, Big Daddy, Jeff Gordon, that 24. His car is good on the long runs. And we know we normally get long runs at Texas. That 88 sure looks a lot better now that uh, they put four tires on it. And he battles Almendinger for ninth. Back to the gas in turn two and goes right after Jeff Gordon for eighth. Not going to get that one, but he slides up in a ninth spot. Jimmy Johnson, the new leader in Texas, 116 down, 218 laps to go. Here's an inside look at the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Casey Kane is the fastest lap of the race. And the most laps led in this race, Greg Biffle, who just gave way to Jimmy Johnson a bit ago. Get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with live in-car audio and real-time stats. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Jimmy Johnson's lead is not secure. He had driven away from Greg Biffle by eight or ten car lengths, but the Biff is back and challenges for the lead in two. He's tenacious, man. That's one thing about Greg Biffle. He doesn't ride. He races all the time. And Jeff Gordon moves aside for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Eighth place. Yeah, I think Gordon, I don't know what happened to him. He caught up to Kozlowski, who's just ahead of Junior there. He caught up to him and was trying to get around him. Kozlowski went to the really high side, pulled away from Junior and Jeff Gordon, and now Jeff let Dale Jr. by in the 88. So I don't know if Gordon's slowing down or the other two are speeding up. Well, what's happened to Junior is that car has steadily gotten better and better uh, the longer this run goes. What about Gordon, Steve? Mike, we just heard Jeff Gordon say, I'm sliding the back end of the car around a little bit now. Yeah, something happened to him, uh, definitely, Steve, because he was on a pretty good charge there. Now, all of a sudden, he's kind of backing up a tad. Dale Jr. restarted 14th, and uh, he has climbed up to eighth place. Marcus Ambrose having one of his best qualifying runs of the season and one of his best early races here. Fifth place. He's good running. things happen to good people. Marcus spent a couple of days the middle of the week out here in the Fort Worth area. The Habitat for Humanity helping to build a home for a lady and her four children. All four of those children are under the age of eight. And Krista, actually, the, the mother is here as a guest of Marcus this weekend. And Larry Mack, what makes the story even better, Marcus telling me that before he became a race car driver,
was a carpenter. And you were a lady. Ambrose has finished in the top 12 all of his last three races here in Texas. And Kevin Harvick's coming back. And Larry, it's a long way back for Harvick. Boy, it after, is. After uh, that pit stop problem. Yeah, he's about nine seconds behind our leader, Jimmy Johnson. Even though he's cracked the top ten, Kevin's going to need maybe a caution to kind of get help caught up. And we are actually closing in on green flag pit stops. Denny Hamlin looking to be part of the picture. Denny spent his off week caddying for Bubba Watson in the par three contest down in Augusta. Of course, Bubba, Bubba Watson went on to win the Masters. And Denny's driving a special March of Dimes paint scheme tonight. Fifth year in a row that FedEx has donated the hood of the car to that great organization. The March for Babies walks are happening nationwide this month. And you can support them by visiting marchforbabies.org. You would think that maybe that the 11 car Denny Hamlin would have a bit of a, an advantage having Darian Grubb be the crew chief on his car this year. Tony Stewart's crew chief when he won here last fall. That should parlay into a pretty good setup. We, we thought that the case at Las Vegas last month, and it didn't yield very good results. Ended up finishing 20th in that race. And remember, Hamlin swept both cup races here in 2010, Matt. And Mike, the big concern coming in was the car being too free, and absolutely the opposite. The car has been really tight every run. They keep making adjustments, and they're even telling him what lines the fast cars, the leaders like Johnson, running between the seats in the middle to see if that'll help. Nothing. The car is still tight. Well, they've got to take a big swing. Up again. Matt, because in the 13 races since Hamlin's win here in November 2010, He's got only one top five finish on mile and a half tracks. 203 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson is the race leader. Everybody gets a good shot here in Texas. Farmers. Here's a look at our farmers race summary summary. Jimmy Johnson the leader the first of 30 cars on the lead lap Trevor Bain the last of those. We've had six different leaders and 12 lead changes. Two cautions, one for debris, one for Bain into the turn three wall. That occupied 10 laps. And the wind has not dropped below 20 miles an hour, and we've seen 40 on the old anemometer. You can see those pit signs blowing in the wind as we're not too far from green flag stops. Now, I'm saying we'll see some of these drivers hit and poke pit road probably in the next four to six maybe eight laps you go back to the first cycle of green flag pit stops AJ Allmendinger Clint Boyer Jeff Gordon Juan Pablo Montoya some of the first drivers to come to pit road Jimmy Johnson is driven away from Greg Biffle now by 2.3 seconds Pat Kenseth another eight tenths back and Martin Truex another two and a half back last time I saw wind like this blowing at a racetrack was in Ontario California and the Santa Ana winds we're kicking up at that time and it was blowing about this hard but the flag right here at the start line just fascinates me it's got the flagpole bowed over yeah Darrell they almost couldn't run that race it yes. was so hard to see because of the the dust devils uh, that kept popping up here's tonight's Ford F-150 EcoBoost track facts Ford has 10 cup wins here leading all manufacturers Carl Edwards three leads all drivers in the win column Ford's last win was this race one year ago when Matt Kenseth went to victory lane. Well, you can really tell when it gets close to pit stop time. I mean, we're lap times have fallen off to almost 32 seconds flat. Nice race here for third or fourth place rather. And here comes McMurray in the one Boyer and Menard beginning this round of green flag stops. Dick. Well, Clint Boyer thought he was going to have a better night than he's had so far, Mike. They put Mark Martin set up underneath that car and thought it was really going to get the job done. They've been okay, but they've kind of been on both sides. They're tight and loose to the number 15. So more adjustments, a lot of racing to go. Casey Mears in, and Martin Truex let those cars go by because he was headed for pit road along with Mark Martin, Matt. Solid night so far for the 55 team, especially over the wall. Mark says the car is just needs to be freed up a little bit more. Small air pressure change, Krista. Martin Truex's team has gotten him out first on the last two stops. This time, Martin said, I thought, think you fixed my grip issue, but now I'm a little bit loose into three. A.J. Allmendinger also in. A.J. has steadily been climbing this race right now. He's just complaining about plowing tight. Burton Smith 
Castle and Kurt Busch in. Here comes Dale Jr. Dick. And Dale Jr. has had a good run here tonight, Mike. Uh, he won his very first cup race, his very first nationwide at this place, and a lot of his fans think tonight's his night. Matt. Two stops to go, the reverse and adjustment. Now Harvick says the car a little loose in and tight in the center. Meanwhile, the 11 of Denny Hamlin trying for his third Texas win stop already complete. He says the car is just absolutely too tight. I cannot hold my line. Significant air pressure change for Denny. Christo. Tony Stewart asking crew chief Steve Addington, how much further can we go on the track bar? Steve Addington answered, we're already there. That's the adjustment they made. Steve? Pretty big adjustments for Ryan Newman as he leaves the pit road. He says, I'm all over the track. It's still tight. Dick. And Kyle Busch now on pit road, and they have struggled. Every once in a while, it will seem as if they have, oh, problems with the right front. That's going to be tough on Kyle Busch. It's going to be a long pit stop as a result of what the trouble they had on the right front tire. Looked like the jack dropped and on the air, caught the air hose under the tire. Exactly, Mike. Steve? Jeff Gordon on pit road, and he says, it's not that I'm loose, the front end sticks, but the rear is unstable. Four tires, fuel, air pressure adjustment, Krista. Steve, the issue for Marcus Ambrose right now, loose in, no side bite off, a four tire change for the Aussie, Matt. And Matt Kenseth at the car, absolutely too free on entry into three, not bad into one, needs it to be tightened up just a tick. That leaves Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, and Trevor Bain. And Marcus Ambrose had a problem getting out of his pit. If you have problems like that, like what Kyle Busch had under green flag conditions, that, that is a huge distance you're going to lose on the racetrack. Is Jimmy Johnson, our leader in the 48, along with Greg Biffle in the 16, running in second hits pit road. Dick? And Jimmy Johnson has a brand new race car tonight, Mike, and it certainly is handling just the way they want it to. There's still a little bit more in that car, so they're going to make some adjustment there. Let's go to Steve. Well, Dick, Greg Biffle's fast. We know that, but they've adjusted every single stop. He says, let's go down one more round on the track bar. It's getting a little bit freer the longer they run. Four tires as well for Greg Biffle. Penalty on David Gilliland, too fast entering pit road. As we come to the conclusion uh, of this pit cycle of green flag stops for the lead lap cars. That 48, Larry, he stayed out there a little bit longer than I think he should have. He lost a lot of time. Well, I think that's the reason you're going to see Martin Trex Jr. in that 56 car leading the race. He hit pit road five laps sooner than Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a big distance and a bunch of difference on the stop. Line. It was two seconds, and he was getting run over by cars that uh, Jimmy Johnson was getting run over by cars that had taken tires. Stayed out there a little bit longer than I thought he should have. Now, Jimmy Johnson on his outlap, Darrell, was wiggling the car back and forth in the back straightaway. He'd gotten up to speed, but what would he have been doing? I Just trying to get some heat in the tires, you know, get, get a little air pressure built up in a hurry, get some heat in the tires. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson fell back to fourth, and Greg Biffle's all the way back to seventh by staying out that long. All because of who stopped early and who stopped later. Martin Truex Jr., your pole sitter, back to the lead. Want a chance to introduce your favorite driver at the All-Star Race? May in Charlotte? Go to Sprint.com slash speed to find out how. And the more creative you are, the better your chances. That should be a lot of fun. Tell you what isn't fun. I'm watching uh, Brett Keselowski go by in his two car, and uh, he's lost his cylinder. He's uh, engines laying down in that car. What are they saying, Steve? Hey, you're exactly right. Darrell, they haven't said specifically what it is, but you see him well off the pace there. They do know they have a motor problem, but he's just trying to lug it out for right now. Well, it, you know, it doesn't come, it never comes a big surprise to me when we have engine problems here. This place will suck the guts right out of an engine. You run such high RPM, high speed, put the practice laps that these guys put in, maybe 150 miles of practice and a 500 mile race on top of that. It's just a real marginal situation for these engines. Yeah, look at Keselowski's corner speed, Daryl, 30 miles an hour off uh, of what the top cars are running. He was in sixth place. He's fallen to 12th and will continue to drop. Yeah, he made a real nice charge up through there. It was looking good, but all of a sudden he slowed. This guy didn't slow down any though. 
still going pretty strong. Martin, Martin Truex, Truex. <laughs> not one little bit. And right now, his lap time is pretty much mirroring Matt Kenseth in the 17, who's running in second, about three quarters of a second behind Truex in the 56. Number one pit stall got him a nice advantage on that last round of pit stops. And he gets that by virtue of sitting on the pole. That's the order they picked their pits, pit stops. Well, slots. Matt Kenseth qualified second starts at the uh, pits at the way other end of pit road and he's right up there in second and coming and here's Jimmy Johnson who's led a bunch of laps after starting 10th he's 1.6 seconds off the lead yeah if you can't have the last pit out pit number one down here the next best one I think is first pit in which Kansas picks all the time when he can Mark Martin started fourth that's where he runs he's three seconds back And Greg Biffle has led more laps than anybody tonight. The Biff started third. He's currently fifth. But he has the fastest car on the racetrack right now per the scoring monitor. Remember, he's one of those drivers like Jimmy Johnson that stayed out on those old tires and lost a lot of ground. Now, the Biff passed Junior four laps ago for fifth place. Dale Junior now in sixth. Six seconds back. And right behind him, Jeff Gordon, I'll tell you, I think he's had the drive of the night uh, to come from 34th up to uh, knock on the door of the top five. And for second place, Kenseth, Johnson, Jimmy Johnson headed back for the front. Yeah, that 48 car is pretty, pretty fast, I got to say. And Brad Keselowski comes to pit road. Uh, NASCAR had told him to pick up the pace. He was below minimum speed. And he takes the blue deuce to the garage. Now, Larry, they had a new engine combination at Martinsville. I'm assuming that they're still running that engine. I know A.J. Allmendinger had it here. That's the reason I was hesitant to say about Brad Keselowski. I wasn't sure if they were running. You know, it was pretty much just a lighter engine, a lighter version of what they've been running. Closing in on halfway, Martin Truex Jr. out front in the Samsung Mobile 500 on Fox is better. NASCAR prime time on Fox from Texas. Our mid-race report brought to you by AT&T with wind gust up to 40 miles per hour. The first half of the race has been a Texas two-step dominated by pole sitter Martin Truex Jr. and Greg Biffle, who's led the most laps. But Darrell Waltrip, who are you keeping an eye on? Well, I'm, my man's good, I know, and he started on the front row. Had a little hiccup in the pit there. That's why I think it was lucky. Matt Kenseth is going to take the car to Victory Circle tonight, I believe. Michael, who you got your eye on? I think he's going to have to beat Jeff Gordon. Like I said earlier in the show, Darrell, he's been fast all year long. His times are solid. He's driven from the 34th starting spot up to 7th. Look for Jeff Gordon in the second half, Larry Mack. Michael, the tires give up so much here on a long green run, and we're having a lot of green runs. What I'm seeing is, no matter where you're running, when one driver hits pit road for tires, you better not be far behind them. Chris, a lot of scrambling on pit road tonight. Well, Martin Truex Jr. has just been asking for slight adjustments all night to give him a better feel. The driver doing his job, but the pit crew has been doing their job. Martin Truex's team giving him lightning fast stops, Mike. Krista, the driver leading at halfway, has gone to victory lane in six of the last eight races on mile and a half tracks. But Chris, over the last 10 Texas races, we've got four more caution flags on average to look forward to. And one of those guys who may be shooting up, Carl Edwards, he has a couple of fifth place finishes in that Roush Fenway Ford, but he has not led a lap all season. A lugged up problem in the pits put him back, but he's working his way back up to the top. That's our AT&T mid-race report, Mike, as we head back upstairs. Martin Truex Jr., no pole sitter, has won in the last 23 races, and he's trying to end a winless skid of 173 races. Yes, it goes back, uh, Chris, to Dover in June 2007. His home track, Truex is from New Jersey, the Jersey Shore, and uh, that's his only win in Sprint Cup racing to date. Boy, he's been fast. Brad Keselowski is back in the race. Steve, what was the issue with his Dodge? Well, Mike, I talked to Paul Wolf, the crew chief on that two car several weeks ago, and he said that he, he was remarkably honest, Mike. He said that they had had some fuel pickup problems or fuel pressure problems, if you will, that they had created themselves, in fact, trying to make a better mousetrap. So he's back out on the racetrack. He's been running in the top ten all night. Parker Clemens.
Klingerman, Klingerman who drives for Brad Keselowski in the uh, truck series, they spent a whole day, like eight hours of testing in Nashville trying to figure out what the fuel issues were. They had those issues earlier this year, thought they had them fixed. Yeah, both drivers had issues for Penske at the Las Vegas race. 162 laps to go in Texas. Martin Truex Jr., the pole sitter, in command. Sounds of the track with 178 laps complete in Texas, and Jimmy Johnson has just inhaled Martin Truex for the lead. Remember, during green flag stops, Johnson waited longer than Truex to pit, and Michael Martin was able to scoot away for a while. You know, I'm just shocked, Mike. Martin Truex Jr. loves running the high side. When he saw Jimmy Johnson coming up there, I figured he would move up and do that as well. You think about Truex, Dell Jr., Casey Kane. Those are guys that are fast on the top, but Martin's been dedicated to the bottom of the racetrack. He's made it work, but Jimmy Johnson's tough up there. Johnson hunting the lead. Truex gives him enough room. And the 48 clears Martin Truex. You just can't overcome. When your guy gets it hooked up around the top, you just cannot overcome the momentum he has off of both corners. He gives him such great straightaway speed. You just can't block it. Fifteenth lead change tonight. Jimmy Johnson back out front. For the second time, he led 34 laps under green earlier. Gave it up when he pitted. Lapping uh, Dave Blaney, who has been in and out of the garage tonight. You can go to ChevyOutdoors.com. Enter for a chance to win a new Silverado, plus a day of bass fishing with Tony Stewart at his home. I tell you, the way he's running tonight, he might... He might want to go fishing because he is just having a terrible time with this car. It's a backup car, as we know. But I thought they would be much, much, much better than what they've shown tonight. But they've been searching with this car. They've been searching with the primary car. And right now, he's only about three or four seconds from going a lap down to our leader, Jimmy Johnson, in that 48. Now, Stewart's in 22nd right now. And his lap times about three-tenths slower than race leader Jimmy Johnson. They're pretty much on the same straightaway right now as they go down the back. Johnson lapping past Reed Sorensen. With 152 laps to go. Johnson coming up on Regan Smith. You know, a lot of folks thought, thought tonight would be a Ford free for all. But here we are with 150 to go with Kenseth in third, Biffle in fifth, and Ambrose in ninth. Edwards mired back in 18th. And, and my, Larry, here's a perfect example of what happens to you when you have trouble in the pits. Get behind and you just can't bust out of that bubble and uh, make it back up to the top, to, back up to the front. Here's Montoya on pit road in front of Steve. And Mike, the word from what Pablo Montoya, he says the car Clint Boyer is going to be on pit road as well. You're looking through the windshield of his car. He has been fast, and he has also been trying to hang on to a car that hasn't handled very well this evening. Matt. And the one car McMurray is in. The car too free on exit, too tight across the center. Adjustments, he's already away. Krista. Carl Edwards had to recover from coming in to fix those loose lug nuts on the last stop. They've slowly been gaining ground. He's in. He says the car just absolutely too edgy on exit and way too tight across the center. Just cannot get it to turn. Significant air pressure change for the 29. Krista. Keep your eye on A.J. Allmendinger. He has been very fast after fixing those problems early in the race. He said his race car is a seven tight right now. Vic? And Kyle Busch still struggling with that number 18 car. 
they just can't seem to get it as fast as Kyle Busch wants it. Matt. Mark Martin absolutely pleased with the 55 machine. He says the balance almost perfect. No changes for Mark Dick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. either could have a car that could win the race by speed or a great pit stop. He stole the crew. He wants the pit stop right now. Fast. Ryan Newman's in along with his teammate Tony Stewart. Here comes Regan Smith and pole sitter Martin Truex. Biffle's in as well, Steve. And Greg Biffle says he's lost his ability to turn the race car just a little bit, Mike. They thought about doing a track bar adjustment. Greg said, no, let's leave that. Let's just do an air pressure adjustment. Four tires. Krista. Martin Truex overshooting his pit stall a little bit. The team working on the car now. No plan to change. Jimmy Johnson on the left side of your screen pits out of the lead. He says periodically the car just goes wildly loose. They think it's the win, Matt. Matt Kenta smoked it on entry into his pit stall. He says the car is undrivably sideways. They were going to try to go in a different direction, not making much headway that last run, but the car was still third before they were out of pit stops. Jeff Gordon, Denny Hamlin in as well as green flag stops continue. We're seeing that window get smaller and smaller. I think we saw the last time when that one driver hits pit road for four tires, you cannot be far behind. How about Jeff Gordon, Steve? Well, Larry, the thing they've been chasing on this racetrack, the front end of that race car is planted, but they don't have balance from front to rear. He's wanting help. That's what he asked for to the rear of the race car. Larry, one of the car characteristics of this car is the big, fat, flat sides. It gives the car a lot of side force. It also allows that wind to mess with it even that much more when it goes off in the corner. The more aero-sensitive a driver's car is, the more the wind's going to affect it. And, and that's why I mentioned uh, conditioning in the uh, beginning of the show. When this car is, when you're fresh and you're up on the wheel, you can hang on to an evil car. But as the night wears on and you start to get tired and you lose a little focus, that's when it becomes a real chore. All the lead lap cars have pitted under green and Jimmy Johnson is back to the lead. Under 39 laps to go as we take you inside the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Martin Truex Jr. has led more laps tonight than any race since he joined Michael Walter Bracing 79 laps ago. And the biggest mover in this race will be Jeff Gordon. Get unlimited access to the Sprint Cup Series with live in-car audio and real-time stats. Only on the Sprint Network, the only national carrier with truly unlimited data. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. There's Jimmy Johnson. His low Chevrolet leads Mark Martin by three and a half seconds. Greg Biffle another half second back than Matt Kenseth and Truex the top five. Did you say Mark Martin? I did. Wow. He just uh, kind of hanging around, isn't he? He is right there. You know, if you're wondering how in the face of 40 mile per hour winds, these cars can stay glued to the ground at 180 plus, Jeff Hammond explains. Normally, when we're talking about the Ford Racing Tech car, we're always talking about the mechanical side of it. Today at Texas, because of speeds, we're going to start delving in really into the aerodynamic part of it. And this is what we're going to show you, folks, is how the air flows over this race car. And what happens is when it hits the front nose and comes up over, gets to the rear spoiler, some of it comes up the sides and gets back to the rear spoiler, we don't want to lose sight of the, about the fact that we have also the benefit of side force hitting the side of the car. Going in these corners as fast as we're going into, you need to have that stability. That means sealing off the side skirt, sealing off the front nose to have a balanced race car and a fast one. And, and that's what I was talking about uh, going into the corner and the big fat sides on these cars. When you go in the corner, the, the side force is caught on the right side. That's the air that you're pushing up against the right side of the car. But then you add these tailwinds or these high winds, they're pushing on the left side of the car. So you really got a cause and effect there. The, the wind is trying to spin the car out and the right side is trying to keep it from it. And that, look at, that flag is just whipping, and that flag pole is just rocking back and forth. It's been that way since we started. Yeah, I think that's the telltale sign. Aside from the flag, we've watched that pole going back and forth and back and forth. It, it's, it, I think it's probably the strongest I've seen it all night, consistently. And the height of that flag's about eight feet. I mean, that is a big piece of cloth in the wind. Tony Stewart 
has gone a lap down to Jimmy Johnson the reigning Sprint Cup champ struggling a bit this evening he's one down first car a lap down in 23rd so 22 cars on the lead lap right now remember Stewart led 173 laps here last October one of the five wins that propelled him to the championship and set the race record 152 miles an hour average for this race and uh, tonight not so good if you look at Tony Stewart, he's won seven of the last 16 races. Five of those wins, they've come on mile and a half racetracks. Just Ryan, like I'm doing Texas. the best I can to try to stay with them, guys. I know you are, bud. Boy, and that's not the confident Tony Stewart voice that we've been hearing uh, for many of these last few weeks. Yeah, but it tells you a lot about the man. Yep. He just wants them to know, boys, it's not me. You know, I'm, I'm giving her all I got. And they know when Tony Stewart tells them that, that he's uh, doing the best he can. Well, the wind may be affecting some drivers, others not so much. What about down on pit road, Matt? Just like the 17, they've been battling out on the racetrack. But with all the issues that Matt Kenseth had tonight, his team in the middle of that has tried to rework their NASCAR telemetry. Apparently the wind gust damaged their antenna. They lost NASCAR timing and scoring. They have it back now for now. There's just so many antennas in poles hanging off these big old tall pit boxes and the winds affecting it just like everything else we've seen around the racetrack. Well if there's a guy in the pits that could uh, probably run the race without the aid of any of that electronic stuff it'd be Jimmy Finney. He could do it with a stopwatch and a, and a notepad. In three weeks we head for Talladega Aaron's dream weekend at NASCAR's biggest track great seats available. The number and the website are right there on your screen for more details. Hundred thirty laps to go now it's Jeff Burton who is in the free pass position just being lapped by Jimmy Johnson Burton fighting loose uh, most of the night with his Chevrolet every since they unloaded Jeff Burton's race car on Thursday he has been fighting loose the front end's been planted but no rear grip in the race car. Jimmy Johnson now one point nine over Mark Martin with 129 laps to go in Texas. Jimmy Johnson, your leader. It's NASCAR on Fox live here in Texas in prime time. His last win last fall in Kansas. In time for an AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network. Rethink possible. We've talked about the win. What about the pit stops tonight? Casey Kane, who's yet to lead a lap all season, got boxed in. However, he's hanging around in the top 12 so far this evening. Kevin Harvick, who worked on his way all the way up to second, had lug nut problems, lost seven spots. He came in fifth in points. Carl Edwards, who worked his way up to fourth, had to go back to pit road, checking out a loose lug nut, and hasn't been able to get back into the top 15. And Kyle Busch, air hose stuck on the front right tire, not a factor at all tonight. Chris Myers with Michael Waltrip watching all this in the Hollywood Hotel. What's been the problem for these guys? <laughs> well, I think the wind, we've talked about it all night long, but it can throw timing off for these guys down on pit road as well. We saw a lug wrench hung underneath a tire. Any of those things are just timing. Timing could be thrown off. I'm telling you, Chris, that wind's aggravating. What should we look for over these last hundred laps or so, the effect that'll have? You can't make up any lost time. Well, we talk about Matt Kenseth's team all the time having one of the best crews on pit road. He's in a position to win. Can they perform and get him to victory lane? And then Jeff Gore that team made a mistake on pit road. It cost him a chance to win in California. Maybe they can make up for that here this weekend. Jeff Gordon started 34th. He's led in each race this year. He's led the most laps overall, but does not have a win. Pretty good chance tonight. He's, he's strong. It's a fast car, and he's heading toward the front. Started in 34th. We haven't seen anybody back that far make their way to the front except Jeff Gordon. And Greg Biffle challenging Mark Martin for second, chasing Jimmy Johnson. That's our AT&T race break, and you can text in our driver challenge to AT&T 34763 or go to AT&T fastest driver dot com for a chance to win 4 G brought to you by the nation's largest 4 G network and back upstairs the guys who bring you the race every weekend on NASCAR and Fox Darrell Waltrip Larry McReynolds and Mike Joy I'm watching AJ Allmendinger he he's very unhappy with his car he's complaining to the team that it's really hard to drive he says I'm going to wreck at any minute Krista what are you hearing yeah exactly crew chief uh, Todd Gordon trying to calm him down AJ said this race car is just horrible he's been complaining for the last few laps but when you consider what they've been through tonight you know he started 12th fell back to 20th early in the race removing a spring rubber on an early stop helped them out immensely so right now AJ just trying to hold on to it 
Yeah, maybe they do they have any more spring rubbers? Maybe they can work on that. Well, he's not as unhappy as his teammate. Brad Keselowski has taken his Penske Dodge back to the garage. 118 to go. Jimmy Johnson out front of Greg Biffle by 2.3 seconds. Johnson tonight has led 71 laps. Right now in position to get the extra bonus point for leading the most laps. He's never led this many laps in a Texas race. He has one victory here, November 2007, and in that one, he only led nine laps. I just, uh, you know, we always think back to the race that he and his teammate Jeff Gordon, where they had that little brush up and uh, when the race was over with. Remember what Jeff Gordon said? He said, that 48 car is starting to really tick me off. And we're coming on to possibly green flag pit stops in the next 10 or 12 laps. We still have probably about three more pit stops to make to get to the end of this race. Jimmy Johnson working to put Joey Logano, the 21st place car, one lap down with 117 to go in Texas. Track that doesn't belong there, like a drink bottle or whatever. Well, Pablo Montoya is going to be the next car by, isn't he? That thing was Gosh. full, too. Yes, I mean, you know, was. he threw out a perfectly good drink bottle. By the way, Fort Worth has a $500 fine for littering. Here's our Farmers Insurance Race Summary. Jimmy Johnson, one of six leaders of this race, 15 lead changes, just two quick cautions. And we're now down to 18 cars on the lead lap. While we were away, Ryan Newman and Paul Menard each went a lap down in this the longest green flag stretch ever in a Texas Sprint Cup race. The previous was November 09, 122 laps. Here's two guys that are not having what I would call a stellar night, but they are having fun racing each other. Kyle Busch and uh, Carl Edwards, they've kind of been all over each other, want to go high, want to go low, and then they'll swap around a little bit. I guess they're enjoying the evening. But remember, Carl Edwards in the 99, he was running in the top 10. And on that second caution at lap 94, he had to come back to pit road for a loose wheel, restarted the race back in 30th. We've not had another caution since. No, he and uh, Kevin Harvick. Uh, Harvick was up front early, had that pit road miscue. Harvick has rebounded the seventh. But as you say, Larry, it is so hard to pass cars here. Work your way back up through the field. If you have a problem like either one of those had, it's going to be tough to rebound. And you know what? Emotion has a lot to do with it, too. You get upset because that happened to you. You're running pretty good. And then you just kind of deflated. And uh, sometimes it takes the crew chief to get you pumped back up and get your head back in the game. And then Kyle Busch in that 18 had a worse problem. He had the air hose under the right front tire, and that was under a green flag pit stop that cost him so much time on the track. So right. that, that's why those guys are fighting the way they are, back where they are. Right, Kyle Busch fell from 14th to 23rd uh, on that miscue. Uh, we said Brad Keselowski had gone to the garage. He's back on the racetrack, ran a couple of laps, and is now on pit road, but way out of contention, back in 36th spot. 20 laps down but it, but it makes perfectly good sense if you're out of the race maybe you can figure out what your problem is go in work on it come back out run some laps good test there's been a lot of discussion in the last two weeks since Martinsville about cars being many laps down and continuing in the race as Harvick comes in Matt Mike you mentioned his nice recovery and the car much better he says it's not quite as free as it was it started to get too loose near the end track bar adjustment also a nice air pressure change in the back for Harvick as well Kevin Harvick's trying to make up some of that ground right there by being one of the first drivers to hit pit road and get four fresh tires. Short pitting or scheduled, Larry? Well, we're, we're earlier than what you would need to come for fuel, fuel, but Matt, this is pretty much when all the drivers will probably be coming. Absolutely, Larry Mack, definitely in the window. Mark Martin, the last run of the car was perfect. This run a little bit tight. Team made a small air pressure change in the back, and he's away. Jeff Burton is in around with uh, Eric Almarola, Paul Menard. And now Montoya comes to pit road. Trevor Bain there as well. You know, when the race started, we heard loose, 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 loose. Car's so loose, it can't drive it. Now we're hearing push, 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 push. It won't turn. Steve. What Pablo Montoya telling his crew, crew chief Chris Heroy, he says the car is on top of the track. Fix my right front. That'll help me the most. Four tires and fuel, of course, for Juan Pablo. Matt? And Denny Hamlin, Steve, much more pleased with the race car. He says that uh, it's not quite as tight. Krista. 
Chris Ambrose is in complaining of needing more rear grip on the entry, also running a little bit hot. Dick? Al Kyle Busch on the right side of your screen all night long. They have worked on that car to try to give Kyle the speed that he has been looking for. Doesn't have it yet, Krista. A pretty big track bar adjustment for Carl Edwards on this stop. Carl Edwards. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the right side of your screen said that the splitter is hitting the racetrack periodically and sometimes it's way up in the air. And car number 15, Clint Boyer, now on the right side of your screen, on and off real fast tonight and sometimes not so fast. Boyer complaining loudly when the car is not performing to his expectations. Casey Kane's been in and out. Martin Truex coming down pit road along with McMurray and Newman. But Mike, those gusts of wind will hit the car and it'll buff the car. It makes you think the car's all over the place. Krista. Martin Truex and team trying to make up for that last stop for the first time all race. They're making a wedge adjustment because it has worked for their teammate Clint Boyer, so they're going to try it as well. Martin needing just a little bit more. Nick? And Jimmy Johnson, Chris Myers told you that so many of these teams have had trouble on pit road. This team has been absolutely flawless, Steve. Dick D.W. just talking about these big gusts of wind. Greg Biffle just remarked, wow, I almost lost the nose of this race car. He's saying, help me turn this race car. Air pressure adjustment of four tires for the bit. Greg Biffle came in at the same time as Matt Kenseth and Jimmy Johnson. They've been three of the cars to beat tonight, Matt. And Kenseth said he needed some big changes. Absolutely could not maneuver the way he wanted to. He lost the nose of the race car way too tight. He said the entry, though, positive news, was much better. This is the sixth straight race at Texas with a green flag stretch of over 100 laps. So seeing a couple of rounds of green flag stops tonight. Jimmy Johnson back to the lead. Coming up next on Fox, your late local news, and then Fox Late Night, Alcatraz, and New Girl. Check your local listings. Great new show, New Girl. 100 laps to go in Texas. We're going to take you side by side with Jimmy Johnson leading Greg Biffle after pit stops by 1.2 seconds. The lapel pins we wear support the American Heart Association, a great organization that helps build healthier lives free of heart disease and stroke. To learn more and find free resources, please visit heart.org slash Fox Sports. Jimmy Johnson over Greg Biffle now by 2.4 seconds. And we talked about Kevin Harvick, who gained one position uh, by short pitting a little bit, pitting at the beginning of the cycle. Uh, but Larry, did he gain anything on the leader? No, he gained spots, but he actually lost ground on the leader. The biggest thing, his car is just not near as good as Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle and those drivers up there leading. I'm watching the 5 and the 11, Larry, and that 5 car, they have done a lot of adjusting on that car tonight. He's running 10th right now. That car is getting better and better as this race gets near the end. He just went by uh, uh, Denny Hamlin there for 10th place. Yeah, Casey Kane qualified fifth, had fallen almost outside the top 20, but now, like I say, he's cracked the top 10 back. And I think, Larry, that's that's kind of the history of this race. The last 100 laps of this race, the last 100 miles or so, the cars that you haven't talked about much all night all of a sudden surface. And the guys that we didn't think were going to be good turn out with pretty good finishes. Daryl, another guy that's been impressive and moving his way up toward the front is the 51 car of Kurt Busch. He's driven up to the 12th spot. He's ahead of his brother, Kyle, and is making his way toward the top 10. I like what I'm seeing out of this cat. Another thing we talked about early in the race, I'm really surprised. I said they would run low early. Heck, they're still running low. The groove has just not done what we're used to seeing it do here at Texas. Most of these guys are dedicating themselves to the bottom. And when I say that, a guy that's really good on the bottom is Mark Martin. You get a car, a track where you got to run low he's a bottom feeder he'll be there all night long he's pretty good right now sitting there in third place running good lap times keeping pace same times as the leader let's take a look at mark let's see what he looks like in there he looks pretty comfortable he got that right hand way over on the far side of that wheel pulling down on it and daryl now i see what this clear thing is on top uh, of his helmet 
uh, where the cold air tube extends all the way to the visor on a warm humid night need to keep your windshield clear yeah on the windshield keep your uh, helmet visor clear too yeah I noticed that in practice that's a little bit different uh, apparatus on his helmet there than I'm used to seeing I, I tell you that shot right there makes me want to be in that car Darrell not very often do I get the itch to be in there but that's a great picture guys that shows you what marks up up against driving around this track really battling the car down into the corner a lot of movement in his head it's a handful here at Texas yeah, and we saw that we had this shot in uh, California, I think it was, and Mark looked like it was on a Sunday drive. But right here, even though he looks relaxed, every muscle in your body is tense. When you go in the corner right here and the car loads up, you get G-forces. It really puts a lot of strain on every muscle in your body. Well, you said at the top of the show, Daryl, that 500 miles here is a workout. And uh, nobody works out more than Mark Martin, not in this series. No, we don't like to say he's 53 years old. We like to say 53 years young, loves to work out, loves to do it to rap music. And, and look at Biff. He's laid back. Look how he's laying back in that seat, Larry, like he's got his head locked in position between the two headrests. Look at the difference in the hand position. Mark Martin all over on the left side of the wheel, pulling on that wheel. Biffle, three and nine, and just kind of playing with it as he goes through the corner. Watch him, watch him juke it a little bit going through the corners. Let's take a look at Denny Hamlin. In the same fashion, uh, new this year to NASCAR on Fox, we uh, have dual path from the in car at some events where we can give you a couple of different looks. And here's Hamlin from the dashboard view. What's neat about these views like this at night races, the drivers wearing those clear shields, you can look in there and see the eyes of what's going on. Yeah, it just, it just takes such focus to run this fast. On a track with the condition the way they are, a little windy, car moving around a lot, you've got to stay on your game, baby. Looks like he had that same apparatus as Mark Martin on the top of the helmet. And I think that's something yep. new, Mike, because we yep. get in these cars all the time, and I haven't been seeing that before. Jimmy Johnson coming up on Trevor Bain, who had trouble early, got up into the wall and brought out the second of two cautions tonight, but that was way back at lap 95. And Bain's been able to continue. Uh, Eddie Wood announced this race. He's going to run uh, Trevor Bain in the Sprint All-Star Race coming up in May. That race is going to be a fun race this year. There's Junior. Now it's kind of old school. You see how he's got it all, both hands over on the left side of the wheel? You Actually, you're pulling under. Your left hand down there is pulling the wheel down under, and your right is almost like a guiding hand. It's just there for a sight almost. And that's... That's kind of the way old guys like like me used to race, all over on that left side, pulling on that thing. Now he's in ninth place, 16 seconds back. Uh, but Dick, right now, his lap times are about a tenth of a second slower than his teammates, Jimmy Johnson, in first place. Yeah, Junior has told the crew that the car is worse following that last pit stop, and they are working with the theory that the wind is bothering them more than some other people. Interestingly, I talked to Kyle Busch this morning about that. He has complained all weekend long about the wind, and it's his theory that some people just feel more aerodynamics in the race car than others. Perhaps that is going on with Junior as well as Kyle Busch tonight. And the later, the, the later you get in a race, like it's grueling. We we haven't had any cautions. These guys are working hard every lap. The later it gets in this race, the more you feel things because you get tired. You lose your focus a little bit. Kyle Busch moving past David Rudiman, not on the lead lap. And we mentioned earlier the idea about Rudiman two weeks ago running 80-some laps down, stopped on track, brought out a caution. And what we weren't aware of at the moment it happened was that those two cars, Kyle Busch and David Rudiman, along with Dave Blaney, were all fighting for position, even though they were 80 laps down. And had Rudiman been able to complete the race, well, he would have been in the top 35 this week and not have to worry about timing his way into the field. But unfortunately, the car broke. He stopped on the racetrack Jeff, just after Jeff Gordon made what would have been the winning pass at Martinsville two weeks ago. Caution came out. Remember what happened on the restart. Newman bumped Boyer. Boyer inside of Gordon and synchronized spinning with Jimmy Johnson. And you can hear everybody stays in the gas. Jeff Gordon stayed in the gas, got into Boyer, took him out. I mean, it's just a big mess, but let me tell you something. That wreck, I didn't see David Rudman anywhere in sight. No. So I don't know, you know, you can say David Rudman caused that wreck. I'm not real sure how. 
One thing about it, David Ruderman did not just stop on the racetrack. He broke a timing belt. His car would not go no further than where it stopped right there. How'd you know that? I've got several text messages from Tommy Bowen, the owner of that car. There are two of the cars involved in that big finish last week. Ryan Newman won the race. Jeff Gordon was leading on the final restart, but he and Jimmy Johnson had old tires. And here came Boyer, and then Newman slipped through. Johnson in much better shape right now, 1.1 seconds ahead of Greg Biffle. See, we're headed to Kansas next week, a Sunday afternoon race. That's the last track that Jimmy Johnson won at when he won one of the races in the fall during the chase there. And that's also a track, I think, that's on schedule to be repaved right after this race. So when they go back there in the chase, uh, they'll have a brand new racetrack to deal with. Pocono's been repaved. Michigan's been repaved. That's going to throw these guys a lot of curves in the second half of the year. Johnson's lead is shrinking now, of course, as the leader, Darrell, he's the first driver to deal with lap traffic, and none of these fellas want to go a lap down, or in the case of Bobby Labonte, another lap down. So that'll allow Biffle to maybe close just a little bit. He's got Johnson's lead down to under a second right now. And partly because of traffic, Greg Biffle now is three-tenths of a second a lap quicker than the leader. Well, I just don't think there's anybody in this race tonight that wants to win any worse than Greg Biffle does. He's leading the points. I, I, I listened to his interviews, and he seems almost ticked off that he's not getting enough PR. He's not getting enough publicity for leading the points and having a year he's having. I think he's trying to change that tonight. Need to stress, we still have two more pit stops to get to the end of the race. We've seen a lot of mistakes made on road by drivers and pit crews. Oh, a lot can change in these last 78 laps in Texas. Seventy four laps to go in Texas as NASCAR on Fox next week heads to Kansas to the Great Plains and in upcoming weeks look on the right of that uh, graphic at the variety of racetracks we're going to from Richmond at three quarters of a mile to Talladega at over two and a half miles and everything in between. Yeah I love Richmond like all these guys do but the one I'm going to be interested in when we get to Darlington because Danica is going to run Darlington and I want to see the expression on her face the first time she goes out on that racetrack. What's the first noise she's going to hear? Yeah, that's <laughs> the, the rear quarter panel into the wall. <laughs> Daryl, you've always said a driver's at their best in their late 29s or early 30s. That's her. She turned 30 in uh, th these couple of off weeks, so here you go. There you are. We'll see if that's true or not. <laughs> Clint Boyer's gone a lap down to Jimmy Johnson. That leaves us with 16 cars on the lead lap. Back to A.J. Allmendinger. As I look at so many of our drivers right now running in the top 10 with about 70 laps to go, yeah, certainly a big story in 2012. Six races, five different winners. But I think the other big story who has not been to victory lane, not a single Hendrick driver, no driver from Richard Childress Racing, not Greg Biffle, not Carl Edwards, not Kyle Busch. I think that's as big a story as, as to who's been to victory lane. It is, Larry. You would have gotten long odds on that happening uh, this deep into the season. Well, I also think, Larry, that it's, I've said this before, that Tony Stewart has a, he's assembled maybe the best team in racing right now. Michael's done a great job with his guys of getting a new group of guys in there and, and, and really making improvements. But Tony Stewart has a championship race-winning operation right now. I think they're at the top of the ladder right now. Yeah, that organization has won eight of the last 16 races. And that makes it all the harder to explain tonight when Stewart is 24th two laps down and not in contention at a track where he won last fall. And this is what we saw so much last year with his with Ryan Newman running that about the same way. Jeff Gordon makes the pass on Matt Kenseth and that brings Gordon up to fourth from 34th on the grid. And right behind them comes your pole sitter Martin Truex Jr. Having a nice solid run man right from the pole been there all night. He's about a tenth off Jimmy Johnson right now but then again who isn't. Quickest car on the racetrack seems to be Mark Martin his teammate. 
And Kevin Harvick, he's been fighting hard to overcome uh, that lug nut falling off on one of his pit stops. But Harv has climbed only to seventh right now. And Marcus Ambrose had a great qualifying run, started seventh. He's had a strong night, top ten. This guy right here that surprised me that the recovery they made, uh, the five car, Matt Yoakum, what they say about that car? DW not out of the woods yet. Casey Kane says he's been battling a vibration, possibly a loose wheel, but Kenny Francis told him they're close on their fuel window. They're going to have to run the entire fuel run unless the vibration gets too bad. So right now he's just trying to ride it out to about lap 280 or 281. Boy, we're a long way into a run to all of a sudden have a loose wheel. I mean, you know, it's something that... Uh, Seemed like you would have noticed before now. That was something uh, a couple of drivers felt they had earlier. Turned out, turned out not to be the case. Had a vibration that felt like a loose wheel, uh, but wasn't. Now here's Dale Jr., who's 10th. He's been able to contend tonight, but right now he, too, is running lap times about two-tenths off of what Jimmy Johnson has. Tries to thread the needle, and it closed right up. Joey Logano and Ryan Newman right there. They're both one lap down. Denny Hamlin in 11th Whoa. place. Saw something fly off the it's 11. As we were looking at the 11, something flew up off the track back there. Couldn't tell what it was, but I saw some orange something or another fly by the car. Now from Hamlin, it's about two seconds back to Carl Edwards, who has rebounded Krista from 30th now to 12th. Rebounded indeed. They've overcome some major obstacles tonight. They've also made some pretty big Behind Carl, 13th for Kurt Busch, as Michael mentioned. He's had a solid night. And this is so good to see. You look at Kurt Busch, of course, he won the championship the first year of the chase. He lost his ride with Penske. He picked this ride up with James Finch just before the start of the season. They have a handshake. And Kurt will tell you, I'm auditioning this year, not about my ability to drive a race car, but my ability to handle controversy. His younger brother Kyle runs in 14th. They had a problem on a green flag pit stop. The jack came down and the air hose was under the right front tire. And they've had trouble rebounding from that, but he remains on the lead lap. I have to believe Kyle's pretty happy with the way they're running. Remember, Dick Bergman told us at the very top of the show that they put Denny Hamlin, his teammate, set up under that car. I didn't see him staying on the lead lap the way they were in practice. No, but, you know, with no cautions, man, it's just hard to make up time. When you get you lose it in the pits, it's hard to make it up on the track. Yeah, only two yellow flags tonight and none since lap 95. The last car on the lead lap is Jamie McMurray, who started ninth. And he currently runs about 29 seconds behind Jimmy Johnson. That puts Johnson about two, two and a half seconds behind McMurray Chevrolet. And there is your race leader as we cycle around. Jimmy Johnson trying to give Rick Hendrick that <laughs> long awaited 200th yeah. Sprint Cup victory. He was within two laps of perhaps finishing one, two, three at Martinsville, and it all came undone on the final restart. That's why he looks as tense as he does, because he you never have one of these things in the bag. Things like what happened last week, all they gotta do is happen to you one time and you never forget it and you never relax till you cross that start finish line. Don't go to victory circles celebrating before the race is over with. Ninth place, Ambrose and Harvick. Going at it, Ambrose trying to make the pass. We know we're getting very close to green flag pit stops. Getting a report that Kevin Harvick and Mark Martin both are complaining about trash on the grill and Martin Trex Jr. in the 56 car overheating just a little bit. But Larry, here's my question to you. If you can make it on one more stop, barely, by running out the full fuel window on this one, 
Do you give up all that time to the driver stopping sooner to try to make it on one more stop? It depends on how many drivers would be on that agenda. And we're going to know that over the next five to eight laps, I think. Yeah, we saw Tony Stewart try that here. And uh, he and Darian Grubb last year, and it, it just about paid off. Regan Smith, last year's Darlington winner, going a second lap down in the 78. Look at, look at the grill on Jimmy Johnson's 48. Got a little piece of something on it. One thing I noticed about Jimmy Johnson's grill when they were cleaning it earlier, he has quite a bit of opening. And also I noticed the screen that they're running in that grill. It's real coarse. So I think that car is taking in more air, and I don't know that that would be a big, big problem, especially when we're getting real close to a pit stop here. Okay. But I do believe these drivers and our teams are going to go down the road of what you just mentioned, Mike, because if we run another six to eight laps and they pit, make sure they get full of fuel, they can go the distance to the end. Fewest cautions in a race here, five, Larry, and the trend is that from the halfway point to the end of the race, we have an average of four caution flags. We've had none. 57 laps to go. I wouldn't count it out just yet that we won't have a late race caution. If we don't, I would be shocked. Yes, I agree. Well, Jimmy Johnson in position to gain three positions in the Sprint Cup standings. Uh, Tony Stewart in position to lose five spots in the standings. As Stewart runs in 24th, two laps down. Well, there's such a log jam right there. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, all tied in the points. So uh, you can make some significant gains if you can get a great finish. The pit window's open. Joey Logano is the first taker under green. And now Kevin Harvick's picked up a bunch of, uh, seems to be a lot of plastic wrappers around. Well, the around. thing about it, these fans have been here all afternoon, all evening. They've eaten a lot of hot dogs and, <laughs> and eaten a lot of potato chips. I'm sure there's a lot of plastic bags out there floating around with the wind the way it is. And here's Harvick on pit road following Logano. So green flag stops are in play. Matt. Kevin Harvick clean to the adjustments he made on the last stop. Chassis adjustment again. Also air pressure change. Just trying to get better balance on that 29 machine. Regan Smith also in as Harvick pulls away and Jimmy Johnson was trying to get up close to Tony Reigns in the 33 to try to clear his grill by the differential in air pressure but instead it's taken a lot of time for him to get by those cars. Yeah but it's also allowed Greg Biffle to close right up to his back bumper. Uh, I think he might want to look in the mirror instead of looking at the bumper of somebody get the trash off. Denny Hamlin and Carl Edwards in Matt. The car a little bit more on the tight side, but it's really been one of the better runs all night for Denny Hamlin, the 11 car. Darian Grubb looking for an air pressure change. Krista? Matt Carl Edwards saying his car is better, but he still needs it to be a little bit tighter. You see the adjustment, another track bar adjustment. That has been what Carl Edwards and team have gone with all night long. Almendinger and Menard on pit road, along with Clint Boyer, as Edwards pulls away. Casey Mears coming down the pit lane. As we're under green flag stops with 52 laps to go. Eric Almarola in. Uh, Kyle Bush, Dick. And Kyle Bush started at position number 17. Mike, he has run in the teens all night long. Matt. And Mark Martin was told, wait on the signal from the crew chief. Rodney will tell him when they are absolutely full. The car started out a little more free on that run. Game to him, trying to end an 85 race win streak. Casey Kane slides that left front as he hits his pit box. Waiting on the fuel, Chris Vasilka, he'll top it off as well. Chassis adjustment. Lose, Krista. Martin Truex, the wedge adjustment that helped Clint Boyer on the last stop did not help teammate Martin Truex. He said, I am snappy with no rear grip. Steve. Krista, Greg Biffle saying his car has gotten a little free in, tight in the middle. Let's go to Dick. Jimmy Johnson on pit road, pitting out of the lead. This crew has been absolutely flawless. The adjustments have worked time after time. Another great stop. Marcus Ambrose, Dale Earnhardt Jr. also making pit stops as only Tony Stewart uh, among the top 20 cars has not yet pitted. And again, these three cars, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Greg Biffle all pit on the same lap. And that was a race off pit road right there because now they're back up to speed racing. But Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, a lot of drivers, even like Jeff Gordon, they ran 50 laps on that last run. Steve, they got to run 50 this time. Well, Larry Mack, Jeff Gordon's car, very similar in terms of handling to Greg 
Biffles. He said it's gotten really tight in the middle. Four tires and an air pressure adjustment for Jeff Gordon in the number 24. Pull some trash off of Gordon's grill. You see a little bit on Tony's. And they're going to use a long wand from behind pit wall. That didn't work too well. So one of the over-the-wall men, they're limited to six, had to do it. And here was Jimmy Johnson's stop. Plastic wrapper. That's really, but but look how coarse that wire is that they use in that grill. That thing takes in quite a bit of air, and there's a lot of opening there, so he could stand that to be on there. And we cycle back to Johnson in the lead now by six tenths of a second over Biffle. And Mark Martin, eight and a half back, Matt Kenseth. Down 11 seconds and Jeff Gordon 15 behind. 49 laps to go. Did we see smoke from uh, Jeff Burton's car as he came out of the pits and went around turn two? I don't know. He's Not sure. He's he's had a lot of issues tonight. Okay. Yeah, he's four laps down back in the 29th position right now. Not a good night. It's been a rough weekend for Jeff Burton. And it his really team. has, Larry. Could have just been uh, kicking up dust down on the apron as he came out. And Brad Keselowski trying to finish this one, though he is 20 laps down in 36th place after being in and out of the garage. This is just a big test session now. Testing, you know, trying to get the car fixed, what may be wrong with it. Practice some pit stops. Get ready for next week. Which will be a track that he's looking forward to get to, I'm thinking. Daryl, I get a feeling Greg Biffle back there in that 16 car, he's got both hands and feet up on the steering wheel right now, <laughs> chasing Jimmy Johnson. Martin Truex Jr. started this race from the pole. He's led four times for 69 laps. And he's presently sixth. Yeah, I think there may have been some confusion about how long he needed to wait for fuel. We knew everyone needed to get their tanks full of Sunoco race fuel to make it to the end, but it almost like there might have been a little bit of a miscommunication there. Well, with how that, long to wait? When that drop, when the jack drops, that, the driver wants to take off right then, and he's being held by the crew chief. That really kind of what's going on here. Or probably in that case, he was being held by the jack man. The jack man was waiting on the fuel guy. He knows something took a little longer than it should have. Now, the pit window that time, as we ride with Dale Jr. battling Denny Hamlin for position, began at lap 277 with Joey Logano and ended seven laps later uh, with Jeff Gordon. And if this race goes green the rest of the way, those intervening laps could mean the difference between who can make it on one stop and who might not. But how about Jeff Gordon? I mean, we've talked about him a number of times tonight. Now in the top five. And he has just been inching closer and closer to the front all night long. A caution flag, that might be the guy you got to keep an eye on. It'll be 43 laps to go for Jimmy Johnson. At least one more pit stop in the offing, and we think maybe a caution flag or so. How about if we give you a Saturday night NASCAR on Fox? Rank it up.
40 laps to go for Jimmy Johnson in the Samsung Mobile 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. He is nine tenths of a second ahead of Greg Biffle. There is the gap as Biffle builds speed down the back straightaway. Mark Martin, no change. He's still eight and a half back. Matt Kenseth, 12 seconds out of the lead, and Jeff Gordon, 13. They're the top five with pole sitter Martin Truex, sixth. Marcus Ambrose, Casey Kane, Kevin Harvick, and Dale Jr., the top ten. Yeah, only 14 cars on the lead lap right now. So uh, that just tells you the pace that Jimmy Johnson's been setting. He's been lapping a car just ever, almost every lap, seemed like. Steve, how about the Biff? Well, his crew chief, Matt Pugh, just gave him some good news. He said the tires that came off your car look great, and you are one lap to the good on fuel. Biffle responded by saying, hey, I'm going to let him do the 48 that is. I'm going to let him do whatever he wants. I'm saving my equipment. Well, and Greg Biffle ran 50 laps that green flag run up to that last pit stop, and this run will need to be 51 laps for him. But that seems to be well within the fuel window of what most of the, the driver's crew chiefs told me they could run this morning. Mark Martin sits in third, Matt. He's eight seconds back. Does he have enough gas? Mike, he is one lap to the good, but the team had a little bit of confusion, much like their teammate Martin Truex Jr. as far as how long to stay and when he would be released from the pit box. They also told him the reason why they couldn't see the debris on the grill, it was clear plastic. The temperature's good and fuel's good. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Here is Jeff Gordon coming to fourth on Matt Kenseth who was by a pretty wide margin the favorite for this race coming in started outside pole strong record here but Gordon perhaps trying to avenge the defeat two weeks ago when uh, the last restart left him and Jimmy Johnson setting on the front row on old tires and Ryan Newman the eventual race winner quite a drive from Jeff Gordon tonight from 34th up to fourth Matt. Mike just never able to get the handling and the balance what Matt Kenzie would like on that 17. He says the car is sideways wrecking loose and just wobbly loose on entry. It's a handful. These drivers may not get another opportunity to come to pit road. You may have got you pretty much got what you got possibly right now to the end of this 500 mile race. Are we going to run the last 230 laps of this race under green? <laughs> we'll be right back and find out. Here comes yeah. Biffle. Greg Biffle is back Whoa. to the lead. <laughs> and he convincingly crosses the bow of Jimmy Johnson's number 48. <laughs> now that was one of those I'll get even with yous. As uh, Jimmy put the move on Greg earlier. Well, we, we heard Greg say, I'm going to let him do whatever he's going to do. I'm saving my equipment. Now, I got to say, he didn't save a whole lot right there on that pass. But he had been chipping away at Jimmy Johnson about one to two tenths a lap for about the last four or five laps till he got up there and then just drove by him. This is just a Greg Biffle kind of a racetrack. It's a track where you just got to be tenacious, and he is. Got to be aggressive. We just saw that he is, and he got to be fast, and they got a fast car. Very hard at work, deep in concentration. There you talk about Greg Biffle here. I think a move like that is the reason that he's working on eight consecutive top ten finishes here. Well, that was an in-your-fast uh, pass of Jimmy Johnson, and it's our five-hour energy big move of the race. It's not just that he passes Jimmy Johnson. It's that he does it with such authority and jumps right up in front of him to say, take that. They had, a, they had company there with a lap car yep. right to the outside. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think he's going to drive away and leave Jimmy Johnson either. I think Jimmy is probably going to stalk him pretty good. Meanwhile, not everybody is so happy with their race car. Now, a lot of the uh, Team PR people are on Twitter tweeting what's happening with the different cars during the race, and I quote, 
Stewart pits on lap 284 for four tires, fuel, and an exorcism for his race car. <laughs> <laughs> and remember Not a good that, night for that, Tony that's Stewart. a backup car for Tony because he had a practice crash yesterday, second race car of the weekend. Yeah, he's done exercise one of them into the wall this week. Jimmy Johnson hanging tough here. Half a second back of Greg Biffle. With Mark Martin eight seconds back, Jeff Gordon is closing in, but he still has 10 seconds to make up on the leaders. He's fourth. Kenseth, Truex, and Ambrose. Yeah, I think if you're riding along, Larry, thinking you're going to get a late caution, you might want to rethink that strategy. It may not happen. You know, we normally anticipate that it will, but you just never know now with that down to 25 laps to go. Should be a, it'd be like a gunfight at OK Corral if we do have one, I can tell you that. And for the last four laps, the gap has stayed all but constant, right at half a second. That red and white car right in front of Greg Biffle. That's Kurt Busch, the 51. We've talked about him a couple of times, fighting and clawing, trying to stay on the lead lap. Guys, you see how wobbly Biffle and Jimmy Johnson are? I mean, this is 195, 200 miles an hour, and they're driving like they're on dirt. They're asking those cars for all they got. They know this is pivotal in this race. Jimmy Johnson does not want let does not want to let Greg Biffle get too far away. He wants to keep a little bit of pressure on him and try to rally late. Yeah, Michael, it just seems like right now Biffle is beating Jimmy Johnson about a tenth a lap. Maybe Jim, Jimmy Johnson will change that line around. He was pretty dedicated to the bottom. He's moved it up a little bit down in turn one and two. Be interesting to see if he gets all the way up to the wall. Well, this last lap, the only cars on the racetrack that were faster than Greg Biffle were Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. That'd be a, a too little too late for them, though, because they're so far back. Yeah. It's going to take some. They're going to have to have a caution to get back in the, get back in the hunt. Yeah, eight and nine seconds back with 23 to go. Mark Martin trying to erase Harry Gant's record. Harry Gant was 52 years old when he won his final cup race, Michigan, August 92. Wow, that means Harry Gant's 71? He looks 51. Guy's in great shape. Steve. Yeah, Mike, update on Jeff Gordon. You guys have talked so much about his battle from a 34th starting position. Now, what he's okay on gas. That's not the issue, but he just said the car starting to get loose on me right now. Yeah, and he's a lot like Mark Martin. He's nine and a half seconds behind Greg Biffle. So certainly another driver that, that would really need the aid of a caution to get back up there, I think, and battle for the win. And Larry, the 21 car of Trevor Bain just got in the wall again in three and four. A little smoke coming off the car. I don't know if there's any debris from the car or not, but he did get in the wall in three and four again. You're riding with Kevin Harvick as he takes the low side around Trevor Bain at start finish and the Wood Brothers Ford has uh, taken quite a licking tonight but still rolling. <laughs> these, these cars just amaze me every time they uh, they hit the wall slide up and rub against the wall they seem like it makes them faster. Dale Jr. 10th 26 seconds off the lead. Now Kyle Busch is now the last car on the lead lap and not for long. As Greg Biffle is, uh, he's opened it up to nine tenths of a second on Jimmy Johnson. And there's Kyle, not all that far in front of the race leader, who's uh, working against Casey Mears. We have been 213 laps since we last saw the yellow flag. And no, I'm not hoping for one. But it certainly has given this race a very different complexion than what we're used to. Well, it's a race record. I think the record was 152 miles an hour set by Tony Stewart last year. We're averaging right now 160 miles an hour around this racetrack. It is pretty amazing when this race started with 43 drivers out there slipping and sliding around as Michael Walter over 190 almost 200 miles per hour. And that 160 average includes two caution flags plus all of those green flag pit stops. Well, I can just tell you as a driver, I don't care where you're running. Maybe Jimmy Johnson wouldn't feel this way. You just like to see this thing get over with now. You've been out here working hard for the last three and a half hours. Three hours, actually. 
And Jimmy falls one second behind. And although all of Rick Hendrick's cars are in the top 10, right now they've got work to do if they're going to catch Greg Biffle. I think if we have a caution, Larry, it's going to be one of these cars that are up next to the wall. They're going to get in there a little too hard, trying to make up a little bit of time, maybe racing somebody, and maybe we get a caution from that. Otherwise, I don't see any problems. Well, one thing we know, even if we're deep into this race with only a handful of laps to go, caution comes out. You're going to have to get four tires if you even want to have a chance at winning this race. Even if it's a green-white checker? Well, well <laughs> I, 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 I would, I agree, I agree, but let me just tell you something. In last night's race, uh, Austin Dillon stayed out on old tires, led the race for a little while, and still got a top five finish with about 20 laps to go. And, and Richard Childress told me this morning, he said, Austin, who is Richard's grandson, uh, he said he was a sitting duck. He was hoping that some other cars would stay out. And, of course, they did not. 12th place, Denny Hamlin and his Joe Gibbs Racing teammate, Kyle Busch. Yeah, I think that the difference maker would be how many laps that these drivers have on their tires already. Most of them made those green flag pit stops back a lap 280. Now oh. it looks like Jimmy Johnson's hit the Jimmy, wall. Jimmy Johnson just got in the wall down here in three and four. The whole right side of the car. I don't think he hit it hard, but he got up against it. Now he's staying on oh, track yeah. at speed. Woo. There it is. That's a pretty hard lick. Looks like that Trevor Bain. Yeah, I think so. But as you said, Daryl, the strength of these cars and their ability to take a shot. Johnson. Right, through the wall. right side of the wall into three. Right. Johnson is still at speed. Yeah, but he's a, he, he's now losing about a half a second a lap to Greg Biffle. 32.30 to Greg Biffle's 31.70. And the guy that they need to be talking to, Biffle, can slow down just a little bit. Don't let the same thing happen to you. That's what I was worried about late in this run, trying a little too hard and getting up into that wall. Greg Biffle has a three-second lead on Jimmy Johnson, who has five seconds on Mark Martin as we look at 10th place and Carl Edwards has moved to 10th Dale Jr. back to 11. Carl Edwards in that 99 the last caution we had over 200 laps ago had to come back to pit road so pretty much from that restart 30th to the top 10. All under green. Jr. coming back up toward the bumper of Edwards but Carl's a little bit quicker and right now the fastest car on the racetrack Mark Martin in third but eight seconds behind. And Mike, you said at the top of the show that you you ha had a feeling maybe a Roush Fenway night with Carl Edwards moving into the top 10. All three of those drivers are in the top 10, obviously including Greg Biffle, your leader you're riding with. Yeah, you got three Roush, you got three uh, Henrik cars all in the top 10. And uh, what's Michael got there? He's got one, he's got two in the top 10. And the fourth Ford in the top 10 is Marcus Ambrose, the Richard Petty. Motorsports car. A, a really good night. Solid night for Marcus Ambrose. So there is the gap, which was a second and now is 3.2. Yeah, Johnson's just going to try to hang on here. He did a lot of damage to that car. Uh, a lot of right rear damage. And that really affects these cars. Dick. Dick? Johnson has told his crew that the car has gone tight. He really needs clean air in order for it to run well. Chad has told him just bring it home and you can hear the tension and the disappointment in the voices. He's got to nurse that thing for 10 more laps at 190 miles an hour. But we're getting the word from Steve Burns just like Daryl pointed out here with 10 laps to go that Greg Biffle's crew they have told him what's going on behind him and you can see on the score monitor well, at least it did for a couple laps, but now he's picked the pace back up again. Yeah, he'd only backed off about a tenth of well, a second. And, you know, Daryl, that's got to be hard when you've been running your guts out for 324 laps and they say, oh, you can pedal it now. Well, Biffle's one of those guys you'd have to tell every lap because he would slow down the lap you tell him, that's but then right. he would Maybe pick it right back. Maybe twice a lap. Yep. Every, every time he goes by, you got to tell him. But he's a, he also a lot of drivers don't believe in slowing down. You get out of your rhythm, you might get in trouble. Well, we listened in on Greg Biffle and team as we close down at nine laps to go. Take a run to the good, but it's going to take all the fuel we can get here. Got a half a straightaway on the 38. Even more reason to back it down a little bit. 
Don't gamble, man. Just back it down. You got a big lead. Nobody's catching you. Save some fuel. Be safe. Let's see. Let's watch his, yeah. watch his RPM and his throttle trace. See if he backs off a little early here. Yes, sir. Backing off at about 8,500 and coasting. And he's catching up on a big battle. Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin are fighting for position just in front of him. And Darrell, one thing I noticed when you look at that throttle track. Well, there, there, a little bit of gas. You got plenty of room for the 48. 70 to a flat. When he rolls out, he let it roll for a while, completely out of the throttle. It's a really comfortable way to drive. When you can roll out, let it roll down in there, coast, and then pick the throttle up nice and soft. And the and the spotter and the crew chief are saying you're holding your own and maybe even pulling away when you're doing that. And when they say 70 to a flat, Greg Biffle's lap time 31.70, Jimmy Johnson's 32 seconds flat, three tenths difference. At ninth place, Carl Edwards has uh, the measure of Kevin Harvick. Edwards keep trying to come to the front and overcome that added pit stop to check for loose lug nuts earlier. Yes, under sir. Caution. A nice, a really nice recovery for Carl. He stayed huh? focused and he really has done a nice job of getting himself back in the top ten. And folks, to tell you how unprecedented this night has been with five laps to go, this is the first super speedway race with over 200 consecutive green flag laps in this century. 1999 at Homestead was the last one. Well, let me tell you something. Averaging 160 miles an hour for 500 miles? That's amazing. You know, when I look at Greg Biffle in this 16 car leading this race as we're coming to four laps to go, I, I think about he was running the Northwest Tour out on the West Coast, yep. and the late Benny Parsons had watched him race. Benny came back and told Jack Roush, there's a guy out there on the Pacific Northwest you need to take a look at. I think he would be an awesome race car driver for you. And obviously, it's worked out well. Greg has won a couple of championships for Roush Fenway in the other two divisions of NASCAR. Yeah, he desperately wants to win a championship in Cup. That gives him a championship in all three series. Unprecedented. Yep, nobody's done that. Biffle has 16 Sprint Cup wins. And in three of those, the driver he passed for the victory was Jimmy Johnson. Pretty, I'm pretty impressed that Jimmy Johnson can hang on here with that car being in the shape it's in. Looks like he's going to manage to finish second. Mark Martin's been able to gain no ground in trying to become NASCAR's oldest Sprint Cup race winner. Not that age is a factor as far as Martin's concerned. Jeff Gordon in fourth, Matt Kenseth in fifth. The big thing that Greg Biffle wants to see is the white flag. He wants One to see that time. white flag because when he sees the white flag, we know we've got a race then. Yeah, he's just gotta, everybody's got to hold their position one more time by and you get the white flag next time. Kyle Busch has won that battle with Denny Hamlin as they fought for 12th place, the last two cars on the lead lap. And now that they're single file, perhaps Biffle will work his way past them. He has 3.2 seconds in the bank on yeah. Jimmy Johnson. No need, to, no need to push. Just ride. White flag, one to go. It's a race. White flag right there, white flag. Final lap. 49 races since Greg Biffle's last win. It came in Kansas in the fall of 2010. I think Marcus Ambrose out of gas down the back. Oh. Down low, not at speed, is Ambrose, but he's going to make it around. And here comes Biffle to become the sixth different winner of 2012. Greg Biffle wins the Samsung Mobile 500. Jimmy Johnson comes home second, 3.2 seconds back. Greg, Mark Martin. You are the man. Awesome job, buddy. Awesome job. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the hard work today, uh, this weekend. Mark Martin third, Jeff Gordon, Matt Kins with Martin Truex. Three hours and seven minutes, 160 mile an hour average. That's a pretty nice night's work. 501 miles. Yes, sir. Biffle extends his point lead. He gets 47 points tonight. He led 90 laps, but Jimmy Johnson led the most. Thank you so much for joining us here.
Most importantly, it's Biffle's fifth top 10 finish in this season's seven races. Woohoo! Nice burrow. Oh, look at this man go. <laughs> we were talking about the Sprint All Star race. Greg Biffle will be in it now. He doesn't have to race his way into it. He's going to burn down the house. He is. He's going to blow out his hind tires, I can tell you that. The unique trophy here is in the shape of uh, Texas cowboy boots. And the winner gets a matched pair of six shooters to fire off in victory lane. This will be Matt Fuchsia, his crew chief's first Brick Cup Series win. It won't be his last. Great night for the cat in the hat, car owner Jack Roush, and for his driver, Greg Biffle. for the Sprint post-race show live from Texas Motor Speedway. I'm sorry, the Samsung Mobile 500 winner is Greg Biffle. He dominated in the first portion of the race, battling Martin Truex Jr., the pole sitter, then came back to overtake Jimmy Johnson, who led the most laps, 156, with 30 to go. Greg Biffle taking the lead, and he's there in victory lane with our Matt Yoakum. A perfectly executed slide job. Your first win as a dad. First win in almost two years. What does this mean for you and this team? Uh, it means a lot. I'll tell you what. Uh, a fan yelled uh, we would never win again uh, when we're leaving the track one day. And uh, I was bound and determined to put this field tree uh, 3 and Ford Fusion back in victory lane. I got to thank Matt Pusha, field tree 3M, Valvoline, Sprint, just the fans for sticking behind the 16. And uh, Rutledge Wood uh, picked us today. But... Uh, so excited for my first win as uh, a dad. I just wish my family was here. Seventh mile and a half track win for the Biff. Dick. And I'm with Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy, you came so close tonight. Second, that's your fourth second place finish out of the last five spring races here. Can you put into words the disappointment of losing this one? Yeah, definitely disappointed, but you know, we had a great race car, and there's a lot to be proud of here today. Um, our pit stops were, were amazing. Very, very fast race car, and a little bit more respect through some lap traffic. Uh, I think it could have been a little different. Uh, just got tangled up in some lap traffic, and uh, 16 made a great move and, and got by me, and then I was pacing him from there and, and didn't have anything uh, you know, left to go get him. I tried and uh, ran out of, of uh, grip going into turn three and drilled the, the fence, but um, you know, brought it home in second. Very proud of the effort. Certainly wish we were over there victory lane but uh everybody knows we're here we're off the close to a one of those cobalt tool chevrolet thanks jimmy steve stick with jeff gordon uh, jeff it's not a win but as much bad luck as you guys have had it might seem like one i'm guessing yeah i mean i don't feel like we've had bad luck we you know a couple of things are we're self-induced a couple of things are out of our control but we've been running so good it's just nice to have you know everything kind of come together tonight um, starting 34th, uh, we had our work cut out for us, but this team did an amazing job. So proud of everybody on this DuPont Chevrolet. What a race car we had. I mean, to drive up through there with only two cautions in the top five, uh, almost could get to mark there at the end, but uh, we had a great night, great car, and we've had this many times this year. We just haven't been able to get it all the way to the finish, so tonight we finally did. This is something great that we can build on. I'm so proud of this team. Can't wait to go to Kansas. All right, thank you, Jeff. Let's go to Chris Devota. Well, it wasn't a win for the pole sitter, but it was a great run for Michael Waltrip Racing and Martin Truex. If it wouldn't have been for that one pit stop, would you be in victory lane? I don't know. I mean, uh, we were off a little bit the second half of the race. Our car got really loose, and every time we tried to tighten it up, we just lose front grip and not help the rear, so we'd end up being tight and loose. So we really just had to leave it loose and, and hang on to it. It was a battle tonight. It was a lot of fun out there running up front with the Napa Toyota. Just uh, like you said, that one little miscue on the pit stop where... I wasn't expecting the 14 to be there, and I just, just slid a foot too far. That cost us a few spots. We were definitely a solid top three or four. I don't know if we had anything for the 16. He was pretty stout. You know, at times we were the best car. At times we were second or third best. But on average, uh, you know, we should have been in top five. And then at the end there, we had to save a little fuel. So I feel like I was uh, I was running down mad a little bit. We were going to have a heck of a race for fifth, and I, I had to start letting off early for gas. But uh, can't say enough about everybody on this Napa team, everybody at MWR. You know, uh, just been a lot of fun. Well, hopefully we can, uh, like I said earlier this week, keep this thing going. And uh, looking forward to going to Kansas next week. Good things are happening for this guy, that's for sure. 
Thanks, uh, Krista. And for Greg Biffle, his first win in the last 50 races, Chris Myers, Michael Waltrip here from the Hollywood Hotel as we check the unofficial results. And Carl Edwards working his way up into the top 10 eight. Dale Earnhardt Jr. 10. Yeah, good rally for Carl. But you know, Chris, if you want somebody in your car to run 200 laps on a mile and a half track to the finish, Greg Biffle's your guy. He'll challenge a car every lap. He rode that baby all the way home. And another sad story, Marcus Ambrose. Man, he was so strong all day long. Last lap runs out of gas, gets 20th. Ryan Newman, who won the crazy finish in Martinsville before the Easter break, part of Stewart Haas Racing. Tony Stewart takes a major tumble in the points, which we'll check in a moment. He has two wins this year, yet he finishes 24th tonight. David Rudman, a big story at the end of the race in Martinsville about the point system, and now he's worked himself back into that top 35, so his team persevered through tonight, gets and a top 25 finish. Brad Kozlowski, remember, was a, into the chase last year as a wild card drive, a rough night for him that certainly will push him back further in the points, but the likable hard drive Greg Biffle, his wife Nicole, you saw him get emotional, his daughter Emma, born last July, watching and rooting for the man, Greg Biffle, with the victory here in Texas. More in a moment. By tonight. Promotional considerations provided by... Biffle fired up, not only the points leader, but gets his first win of the season in the bigger picture, a truck championship, a nationwide championship, and hopes one day to get a Sprint Cup championship. After seven races, he is your points leader with the victory. Look at Matt Kenseth, his teammate, up two, and Michael tumbling back, Tony Stewart losing four spots. Wow, look how tight it is after Biffle. He's got a big lead, but it's they're tightly bunched there for second. And Greg Biffle, as we head to Kansas, he has won there before. Carl Edwards rallied to get into that 11 spot. Remember, with the wild card, that's where that helps Brad Keselowski. Yeah, and you've got to be inside that top 20, Chris. You win a race, and in the top 20, it might get you into that chase for the championship. But you need to be on those two pages. And this race here in Texas set a couple of records, a few as cautions with just two, five the previous record. And Darrell, as he pointed out throughout the race, a pace average speed of 160. That shattered the mark of just under 153 previously set. So let's talk to the guys up in the booth as we wind this down. And a big night for Greg Biffle, but how about the guys who have yet to win in seven races this year? No Jimmy Johnson, no Jeff Gordon, no Carl Edwards. And a lot more. Uh, none of the... Uh... Richard Childress cars have won, the Michael Waltrip racing cars. A lot of contenders uh, still searching for that first win. I can't believe we went 234 laps without a caution tonight. I, I think the other thing, too, is we've had seven races. We've had six winners. And so nobody's dominating right now. That means there's opportunity for the guys that haven't won. There, there's opportunity re ahead for them. So uh, with, with Kansas coming up and Richmond coming up, I think we'll see some more guys that haven't won for a while find victory circle. But that pace, that pace blew me away. 500 miles in three hours. That's pretty amazing. I know Hendrick Motorsports did not get their 200th win, but I still think this was a, a big night for them, especially for Jeff Gordon and for Casey Kane, because that's two drivers. They needed solid finishes like they got tonight. And Chris, Greg Biffle's for real. Never mind all the top fives and top tens. He's the point leader, and now he's got a win. And as we said, success in Kansas. Thanks, guys. Good job tonight. And certainly when you talk about the guys who've had big, Jimmy Johnson leading the most laps, they're closer Jimmy Jeff to victory lane. Did you see Jimmy Johnson go down into turn three and turn that thing sideways, scrubbed it against the wall, saved it, held on to the second spot? Guys like Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle, they're running on adrenaline during those interviews. When they get settled down here in a minute, they're going to be wore out. 234 laps running close to 200 miles an hour down the straightaways and sideways in the turns. That's a workout. For a moment, it looked like Jimmy would cruise home, but then Biffle takes the lead and hangs on to win it. Coming up next on Fox, many of you late local news. Those of you on the West Coast hang in for other programming. Next Saturday, Major League Baseball on Fox, and tune in whenever you can. Among those games, Yankees and Red Sox note the start time, 3.30 Eastern, that's 12.30 Pacific. We talked about Kansas, another mile and a half track like we saw tonight. Brad Keselowski won the spring race there. Back in the fall, Jimmy Johnson. That was the last win for him in Hendrick Motorsports. We'll watch closely 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central, NASCAR on Fox. And don't forget Victory Lane for continuing race coverage from Texas, tune in on speed as they'll continue to keep you updated on everything NASCAR. Greg Biffle, the points leader and the winner. Disappointed last year in his performance, missing the chase. 
and right now in good position after seven races. For Michael Waltrip and our entire production crew, thanks for being a part of NASCAR on Fox. We hope you join us next Sunday. Take care. Gentlemen, start your engines! telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.